Yeah. Howdy, 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 and thank you for joining me tonight. It is Sunday, February 11th, 2024, and if you're here, that means you're missing out on the uh, the big game going on. Uh, you know what? I don't even pay attention to most of that stuff any day anymore and didn't even realize that <laughs> what was going on tonight, but thank you for spending your time with me. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, you know, before we even get this started, let's do like we always do. Let's bring in our good pal and get that forecast from Clearwater. Chad, what is going on, brother? Thanks for having me, Poe. I didn't even realize there was a baseball game tonight, Poe. <laughs> let's get right to work. We've got a lot of work to do with the forecast. 34 degrees, Poe, in Clearwater, Buffalo. The precip is at zero, Poe. The wind is at five. 77% humid. Roscoe advises from the Sky Chopper, Poe. All right. And uh, I got to get on him about being in that chopper again, but you know, that dog dog was what he wants and I'm pretty much along for the ride nowadays. So been an er interesting week, hasn't it, Chad? Oh, absolutely. Lots going on, Paul. My goodness. Uh, we all know that the, um, we saw what happened. Uh, rabbit, Alex, I, I prefer to call her rabbit. I, I think she's awesome. She interviewed Miriam and she had forwarded some questions over to Mike Render. A response came back from an attorney representing the Aftermath Foundation. As far as I know, that's what the uh, the case was on it. Uh, was pretty intimidating, pretty rude. And in the latter part of that letter was the statement that you lay down with dogs, you're going to come up with fleas. And I, I, I was blown away by that. I did, did a live on it. And then I thought I was going to be pretty much done with it after that point because I had said my piece about it, said what I, what I felt, how I thought about things. But no, had to come out with a, a blog that just amazing, just absolutely amazing. And during that blog, a name was brought up. And I had known the name. I didn't know the person and was basically was some really interesting statements made about this person and another person um, besides Miriam. And I was just floored by it. So I had to do another stream and everybody kept asking me, have you seen the, you know, Mike Brown's reaction to it? And I thought, you know, well, I asked everybody on here. If you want, we'll bring the video up and I'll react to it live here for all of you. And one of the things I wanted to do, and there was a lot of people got in touch with me, said, yes, definitely do it. So uh, don't do a lot of these, but this one I wanted to do. Before I did it, I reached out to Mike because I didn't want to use his content or show his reaction if he didn't he didn't want it done. Um, that's one, something I, you know, I'm pretty big about on things like that. Of You know, you have someone that is, you know, they have been affronted or appears to have been affronted by someone and they're giving their reaction to it. And normally I, I just don't like going in and using other people's content. And the, uh, the thing was, you know, he was like, yeah, please. Uh, we talked a little bit longer. I found him to be a very, uh, squared away guy, really good guy. Um, and I just couldn't believe how this all, all came down and how he was targeted out in this. Now I haven't watched his I haven't watched his reply to it. Uh, and for those of you that are wondering, yes, uh, Mike and I have talked about it. We're going to get things set up, and we're going to have Mike Brown on as a guest. We're going to talk about the efforts that he has made. I mean, I mean, he his sole purpose has been to get his mother taken care of, get her out, get her taken care of, you know, and as I'm a mama's boy too. So, you know, for me, I understand completely. And I think it is absolutely awesome what he has done for his mother. And he'll be on uh, as soon as we can get the things lined up and get him, get him in here. And we're going to talk about that. Talk about the efforts he's made. Sharifa. Thank you so much. Sharifa has gifted five memberships. Thank you so very much. That's great. Uh, Sharifa has come on and been one of the, one of those folks that has just been an awesome awesome member of the channel so supportive very nice person i i 
can't say how much I appreciate you. And folks, don't make sure you get over and check out uh, Clearwater Chad's channel. So, uh, you know, I hope you all are ready for this. Uh, like I said, this is going to be one of those things where I'm literally watching this and reacting to it as we go. Uh, I believe in being, you know, very, I, I, I'm not here to burn people. And the only reason I've reacted the way I have so far is because of what has been said and the way ha it has been said. Now, before we get into that too much more, this is Mike's channel. It's Mike Brown 101 on YouTube. Uh, he does some really good content. Um, you know, I've watched some of his other work and it's some very heartfelt content that's coming out of there. I'm, I'm really impressed with some of the things I'm seeing. So, you know, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Um, uh, interesting to see how Poe thinks this went. It got me, it really got me mad. We're going to find out. <laughs> We're going to find out. I mean, a lot of people uh contacted me after the last live stream because they were really surprised by the fact that i was angry normally i'm i'm pretty level-headed about a lot of things but i think it wasn't just the fact of uh, it was insulting people that i know to be decent people and believe me there have been a lot of people who've come out after i started doing these last few lives that have it the best way I can describe it is talking to Marilyn about it. It appeared that people were trying to handle me. I had a lot of people contacting me. I've never heard of wanting to talk to me, wanting to explain why things were going on, why I should think differently. And I was, I was like, I'm so confused. I'm like, who are these people? Why are they talking to me? What is the purpose for this? So let's, um, you know, uh, let me give you a little bit of history. Mike Brown is a, he is currently in the United States Army. He is a helicopter pilot. He has been deployed numerous times. So, you know, former army, uh, former army dog here and uh, always proud. But not only that, he is an instructor. And uh, he, he teaches other people how to fly helicopters and if you don't know the helicopter he flies is called a chinook and the thing is is that uh, to me it's uh, i think it's one of the coolest helicopters out there look it up when you get a chance they're 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 big monster helicopters and he's one of the people that teaches people how to fly these things so chad are you ready i'm ready po let's go ahead and let's get into this i i went ahead i moved it past he has an opening credit in there, the uh, the SPTV credit. I've talked to Kelly Copter, but I forgot to ask her. I, I was on the phone with Kelly Copter for quite a long time the other day. I, I think she's absolutely amazing, and I really appreciate her taking the time to talk to me. Uh, but I forgot to ask her if I could if I could use, you know, show it with that opening in there because that's hers. And I didn't want to step on her toes for that. So let's get started. And this is Mr. Mike Brown. Very good. I'm not seeing anything, Paul. Yeah, there's no video. Give me just a second, folks. I am hearing some kind of background noise in here, and I don't understand where it's coming from. You hear that, Chad? Was that presenting? No, I, no, we didn't hear anything, Paul. That's awesome. That's uh, typical for this this stuff. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll start at where I where it was. Um, Let's see. Here. Alex is, I believe, having Miriam on. If they're not on now, then they'll probably be on fairly soon. Um, so if uh, I would actually prefer um, if uh, you want to go over and support Miriam on that channel, um, feel free to leave this one to go and do that. Or if you want to open up a second browser and try to listen to two things at the same time or catch this on the flip side or just don't even catch it at all, it's completely, completely up to you. But I just wanted to make 
You know, I like that. Um, and, and you'll see, you, I got to say, there's a couple of things there that are, you know, you see coincidentally are a lot alike. Uh, you know, there's been a few times where I've been in the middle of a live and I know someone who is also having a live and I've literally cut mine off, told everyone to head over there to theirs. And then again, seems like we all have the same haircut nowadays. I'm sure that that was clear and that everyone that, uh, that happened because we didn't really plan on um, doing a, a thing at the same time tonight uh, for all those conspiracy theory people out there. Let me just make that clear. So I want to just uh, push people that way if you would, uh, if you would um, so uh, humor me. All right. So what are we talking about tonight? I kind of, I named the thing tonight, flaps and handlings, a drama I never expected. So flaps and handlings, anyone that has been in the, in a Scientology organization, a C organization, this, when we have our weekly staff meetings, this is what they refer to as all, anything that is a problem, you have to go up there and go and spill the beans on all of it. So I just thought it was funny. Um, but for those that may not know, um, Mike Rinder did a blog post today, <clears throat> which he's, um, um, within his right to do, aside from the fact that um, he uh, had a lot of statements in there and he ended up um, naming a lot of people, one of which was me. And I thought that a lot of the communications that I was having, um, except for the video that I did last week, uh, were in confidence uh, with the Aftermath Foundation. And apparently that is not the case. So I'm trying to come in here. Okay, I, I, got, a, I got a problem right there and it's not with Mike. My problem is with the fact that if you're sending confidential communications with an organization like this, especially one that's a not-for-profit or a charitable organization that's supposed to be helping people, you're sending them confidential information. Why are they putting your information out there? That's to me that, uh, that just, oh, that has a stench to it. I don't even want to talk about, but my goodness. Yeah. And uh, Mike how, how would anyone things, going we'll forward, get into those. how does anyone going forward? Sorry, I got an eyelash in my eye, in my eye there. Uh, how does anyone going forward feel that they have this ability to confidentially contact this organization and not be not have their information put out there? That my okay. And I also am going to then uh, get into um, things from my point of view. Uh, some some ground rules, if we can, just for people in the chat. And even for people in the replay, if you want to leave comments and stuff. If your comments are just nasty, like you're just saying stuff and it's spiteful, um, either against Mike Rinder or against me, I prefer you don't do that. Uh, if you're going to use profanity, you'll probably get uh, thrown out just because the algorithm is like that. This is my channel and there's a lot of people that watch it. So I just um, be, have civil civil discourse is what I would like to have. I am completely okay with people again mirrors a lot of the things that that i say you know um be respectful be compassionate be empathetic you are allowed to have a differing viewpoint but here it is you've got he was involved in a confidential correspondence and even though his name was brought out in this blog and i didn't think it was a very favorable way that it was brought out even though his name was brought out in that, he specifically asked, don't come in attacking Mike. And, you know, I've said it before in my other lives about this whole situation going on with Mike and what's going on with him. I was a huge fan and I was so happy and excited when he came into the SPTV world. I was, man, I was really looking forward to it. And I've got to say, more than anything, more than anger or anything like that, I am so disappointed with how this whole thing has gone down. I, I you know, it, it's just been a disappointment from the start, and I'm I, I I I can't tell you how how deeply I feel hurt, betrayed, how I feel that this whole thing has just been a, a complete flap. Is, is the best way I can describe it. And Sir Crepitus and Sharifa, thank you so much. 20 new people are getting memberships to the channel. Thanks to you too. You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you got to leave us, Sharifa. Um, oh, it's 214 in the Netherlands. 
Thank you so much, hon. And, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's get back to this. Um, the, I can already feel I've got a lot of, uh, emotions with opposing viewpoints to what I'm going to say. People that don't like what I'm going to say and people that, uh, completely think that I am full of crap. Um, so if you have those things in there and you do want to comment on that, try to do so in a respectful way. Try to also respect the people to your left and right. And I'm going to go through a lot of information. This will most likely be longer than I want it to be because I, I tend to ramble. And there we go again. I mean, I, I find that very, it, it really gives me a lot of faith in someone who is going to sit there and say, you know what? You don't you don't like what I got to say. You don't believe in me. You think I'm full of garbage. Okay, put it out there. Like I've said before, you can disagree with everything I got to say, and we can have an open discussion and open dialogue about it. Just be peaceful in it. We can disagree on many things, but we don't have you don't. There's no need for vulgarity. There's no need for anger. And I I, I really respect that. I'm on, trying no. to piece it all together. Um, but I'm responding to a blog post that Mike put up at some point this afternoon when I was driving home. <clears throat> I've been home for about an hour. I quickly ate some dinner, kissed my kids goodnight, came up here and started figuring out what to do in response to this. So a lot of this is, um, it's going to be ad lib. So apologize. I'm apologizing up front for that um, being a fact, but just bear with me. I appreciate all the, the support. Again, I want to make something very clear. I'm going to get into specifics of a situation and I want to keep it focused on specifics. I am not trying to trash Mike Rinder and everything that he has done in terms of his work and the good things that he has done. I'm not trying to trash the Aftermath Foundation and all of the wonderful things that it has done. I'm going to talk about specifics that I have tried to address with people and how those specifics are now being turned into generalizations. And um, and I think that's, that's uh, dangerous. So I'm going to at least share uh, where things are in my mind. And uh, hopefully you can just go with me on this little journey in here. Uh and I got to respect that. He's not there to trash Mike. He's not there to trash the Aftermath Foundation. He's literally there in the hopes and efforts that he can, you know, explain his side of it, explain what's been going on and going into specifics that deal with the accusations that were made. You know, I mean, that... Tell me that's not a class act. Honestly, you know, I, I personally, uh, I still support the efforts that the aftermath foundation was started on. And I really look forward to seeing what's going to happen when Aaron opens his new one. And I do not call for people to disown or disavow the aftermath foundation, uh, you know, but I think you should be educated and aware of everything that's going on. And you make those decisions yourself. I also, again, um, it's not about trashing Mike, but it's about addressing things that have been said in the way that they've been said. Um, if you do have questions or comments, realize I'm sure there's going to be quite a few of them. I'll try to get to them towards the end. Obviously, the stuff that is starred, um, it's for Super Chats. I'm going to try to deal with those as a priority. Um, if you do have um, specific uh, questions or comments that you would like me to address if I have time to do that. Just start with all caps questions or comment, and then uh, I can then have those start in there. And then once we get to the end, um, we can go over them. All right, enough uh, rambling. I think everyone gets the ground rules. Um, and uh, the mods, I think, are tracking on what I'm trying to do. And I appreciate all the help just so we can kind of move through this in, um, in a non clunky way. Chad, are you able to star questions from your side over there? Uh, no, no, Paul. Okay. Cause I, I'm watching through, I'm watching through the YouTube viewer on this instead of the stream yard folks, um, hold off on, on questions for me. And you know, until a little bit later in I'm right now I'm paying attention mostly to what Mike's got to say and what's going on with this. And I'm not trying to ignore any of you. I I'm really not. I, I appreciate you all for being here, but I want to give a, a real reaction to what's going on. And hopefully you're seeing it so far. Uh, to the best of my ability. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up a portion of Mike Rinder's blog post. And I have opinions about his blog post. Uh, if anyone's not familiar, Mike Rinder does have a blog. Um, good for Mike Rinder. 
And he shares a lot of stuff on here and a lot of uh, his opinions on things. Mike Render is very knowledgeable. He was the head of the Office of Special Affairs for like 22 years. He was in, he was at the highest levels of the organization and has so much inside knowledge that he has a lot to say. <clears throat> he says a lot of it on his blog. So some of the stuff today was specific about me. And uh, you could go and read through this entire blog. It is quite long. It is literally pages and pages and pages and pages. It yeah. goes into such details about what this specifically is not with respect to what I've been trying to do to advocate for my friend, Miriam Francis. But Mike is tying in a lot of different things from his perspective. And it doesn't mean that they're wrong. But this this approach to giving a, a, a pile of information that then when a person reads it, it's like overwhelming. Scientology would always use this. And this thing is called a DA packet or a dead agent packet. When Scientology doesn't like something, they put together this big culmination of just tons and tons and tons of information. And then they have. Now, if any of you have been watching as of late, there's been a lot coming out about this whole dead agent thing that's going on. Um, I'll get into it a little bit later. I've got someone coming on Wednesday night who knows quite a bit about that. And I'll put that out in just a little bit here. Uh, and then next Sunday, man, I've got a, a guest coming on that I am really excited about. So, but yeah, this dead agent stuff, that's been coming up quite a bit lately. And when you listen to the folks who've actually been around and had to deal with these things, they, they can tell you there's a lot of similarities here. A little snippets of fact in there and then everyone's lead to led to believe like oh my gosh so i'm not saying what everything in here is untrue but i'm saying that the way that this is presented is definitely a gaslighting tool that the church of scientology uses so he doesn't like me saying that um he was gaslighting Miriam, but i'm going to break down some facts the way i see them and you all can either take it or leave it all right so <clears throat> Uh, going into this now as he's going through this he he then makes a statement in here This is on Mike's blog on the same day uh, detective McGray McGarry um, emailed me 21 January about Miriam's phone calls Claire Headley president of the aftermath foundation received an email from Mike Brown Who claimed quote Miriam and I started collaborating in recent months sharing my childhood SO experience that's short for C organization This is when she began to confide in me and ask for my views and advice because she was being left with minimal feedback from Mr. Render about the events that should be pivotal in her case, we spoke of ways to clarify the gravity of the situation. Okay, that is that is a quote from an email that I sent, a private email that I sent to the Aftermath president, Claire Headley. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Mike goes on to say, <clears throat> Mike Brown made numerous false statements about what has what had transpired in the interactions between Miriam and me including allegations that I had lied to her, that she had been gaslit, and she was frankly a bit afraid of his, my answers, that she had been sent intimidating emails, and that I had been actively withholding evidence from her case. I've got a few, few problems right here, immediately. Um, as has been coming out, it's been, we've been discovered, there's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes with what's going on with Miriam. And Miriam is asking for these funds. There is a new technique that is out it's being used by the Department of Defense in regards to helping people with PTSI. And that's the new name for PTSD. I actually like it because PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, well, that, you know, that really does... I don't, I don't think it does well for the people who have it, but Miriam was trying to get the, the funds to go through this, this clinic or this treatment that was going to help her with her PTSI. And there, she was having a lot of difficulty by, from, from what she was saying. And she reached out to someone who she was confiding with. This person went, spoke on her behalf and the information from that confidential personal email that was sent to the president of the foundation found its way into the hands of Mike Render, who then is taking quotes directly from that email and putting them into this blog. I have a real problem with that. Again, we're going, we're talking about confidentiality of a nonprofit, not for profit charitable organization. However you want to say it, these are confidential. What if it's your your family member, or it's you, 
and you have you're giving this information to them and you're trying to keep it you know they uh, on the down low however you want to do it but you don't want it made public and here it is spewing it out in a blog so uh, quite frankly i'm 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 a bit surprised that Mike has, has held his cool through this one so far. I would have been very angry about this. According to Mike Brown, their behind the scenes collaboration had been ongoing for some months during the time Miriam was asking me for help. Apparently, she was pretending that she was happy to talk with me for more than an hour or two weeks earlier. Given her admission of doing pretext calls previously and her refusal to deny a simple question I posed, it seems reasonable to conclude perhaps she did, in fact, record those calls. If she had, her only option was tonight to... You're putting... he, um, He's putting confidential information out in a blog for the whole world to see, and he's worried about are my phone calls being recorded? Have, have you all noticed that? I mean, there is such a big thing about, were you recording my phone calls? You know, I honestly, I believe, I expect anyone that I talk to on the phone that those calls are recorded. It's just how it is. Whether it's our government's doing it, whether it's someone else, or it's the person who's doing it. You know, the thing is, is if you're not talking trash, why are you worried about your phone calls being recorded? If you're not doing something wrong, why are you worried about it? You know, but what I would be worried about is confidentially trying to speak with someone or communicate with them and then putting it out for the world to see. And again, hats off to Mike. He's keeping his cool on this one. Deny having do so to Detective McGarry. She told him she knew it would have been illegal. Okay, so there's a lot of things that he's piecing together in here to paint an exact narrative that makes it look like we're coming after Mike Render. And somehow I'm some sort of big mastermind in that. And I can guarantee you, um, I don't deserve that much credit. Um, <laughs> and uh, let me let me break down for you what is going on. Up here in this first paragraph, he's talking about one portion of an, an entire letter that I'm going to read you the entirety of. There was a private email to address the problem that Miriam was having with Mike Rinder, where she felt intimidated by him, wasn't sure what to do with the situation. And I was writing to Claire Headley to hopefully head off this situation that looked to be escalating before it did so in order to resolve it at the lowest possible level. That was the intention of me writing a private email that's now being talked about in this dude's blog. He then goes on to say, Mike made numerous false statements about what had transpired in interactions between Miriam Francis and me. So last week I did a, um, a video where I shared my mother's story um, where I'm trying to do, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little dry mouth and I am mildly irritated. So let me see if I can brighten this up a little bit. I'm trying very hard to share my mother's story about the elder abuse that she endured while at the same time trying to continue to advocate for my contemporaries and other people that have been in similar situations that I have. It's important to me. And um, when doing that video, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to ignore important things that were going on inside of the community. Um, to pretend that something important isn't happening when I am involved in it and I know that something is going on. This was that, that video that I did last week is after um, Mike Rinder and an attorney, Ford Green, had sent a response email to Miriam in which was a bunch of language that was extremely derogatory, especially when it's targeted at a, an abuse survivor. Um, the invoking Benjamin Franklin, like laying with dogs and fleas, it, it just for me, it, it was very uh, distasteful. And I thought it was important that I, because I had been involved in this, as Mike so eloquently um, states, that I say something that says, hey, I'm not ignoring this situation. I did try to like in, involve myself in this situation and I, and I cannot express how much I bit my tongue during that video. I'm going to play for you, as weird as this is, my video of me and what I said last week. Um, I'll at least play some of it. And you're welcome to go on my site. It's under the lives. It's uh, what, what I call Rosemary's words number two, but I'm just gonna get into this real fast. So we can say what it is that I said, because we're talking about uh, the statement, numerous false statements about what had transpired. This is what I had to say. Uh, 
little bit to talking Good about audience. some of the stuff that came up over the last couple of days and some um, kind of nasty letters that were sent um, to my friend Miriam and also one of the journalists that's trying to help her um, down the rabbit hole. I think Alex the Rabbit is uh, going to be uh, representing Miriam in a discussion. Um, some of that stuff is, um, it's not okay. And, and there's a certain point where you have disagreements and there's just, you know, basic differences on how things work. And then you have just things that are just a complete and total, total distraction. As things go forward and Miriam is sharing her story, this is, even if there's some, if Mike ends up getting some shrapnel and I hope Mike's fine, I hope everyone can sing Kumbaya at some point and everything's better. But unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. Just know that any of the complaints that people are complaining about, if you look at the root of it, it makes Scientology look like crap no matter what. So the, th the discussions that are being talked about, even if someone's kind of getting drawn into it, you're talking about crimes that have to do with Scientology. I, I want to make a comment about that. And I think that he is so spot on with that. You know, even if you're upset with, with Render, if you're upset with Claire or you're upset with Mark, and you're upset, the The fact is, is that, you know, I've talked about it before. You spend a lifetime pretty much within this organization and your life is built around how that they operate, how that they handle things. When you come out and it appears that you're picking back up with your old habits from there. And we've talked about, I've talked about that many times, it's, you know, muscle memory, it, you Oftentimes you do something so much, it becomes part of your personality, part of how you do things. The fact is, he he continues to hold this line of, I'm not here trashing them. And the fact is, is that throughout all of it, we are, it's still showing a very negative light on Scientology because you see what it has done. And these folks weren't low ranking members of Scientology. Um, Mike Render, Claire Headley, they were not low-ranking members, okay? So think about the people who were down under them and the lives that they had to go through and how that, it just shows you, you know, I, I again, a very well thought out and a very, I, as, I, as I view it, very spot on um, way of describing this, that this still hurts Scientology and it still shows the, demonic ways that people are treated that are even high ranking members. Scientology is at the base root of all this. The actual rot occurs from Scientology and moves upward and outward. The way people are actually dealing with that is kind of their business and they need to do so in a responsible manner. I do not want to talk about or go into details about what Miriam is going to talk about with, uh, on the, uh, down the rabbit hole. Uh, discussion with rabbit. And I think that she just refers to herself as rabbit. Um, I'm going to let her go into the details of that. She and I have been working closely together. If any of you are um, looking at other videos on my channel, you can see that Miriam recently helped me share and come out about all the details of my childhood story, which was pretty nasty. And you can see some of the videos that are on the channel. There's a, like a three-parter that I did with her and Christy Gordon. They got me talking about stuff I haven't shared except for with some very, very close friends, and um, you'll find out a little bit more about me. Um, Miriam, because we were working closely together, Miriam and, um, and I started a dialogue, and we had been in contact just working together, and this was well before all this stuff kicked off around uh, November of last year with the Aftermath Foundation, that we recorded all these episodes for my thing well in advance, and then they like to produce them into a little bit more of an edited thing as opposed to just me ad-libbing it here on, 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 on a live. So, when Miriam and I were working together on this, certain stuff started coming out where she's trying to work with Mike Rinder in order to get some stuff that she needs. She started running into some problems, and I'm not going to get into the details about what those were. She then started to confide in me about what those problems were. I tried to help her like navigate that, and at a certain point, it got to the point where she was not able to get the results that she was hoping for from both Mike Rinder and also she was trying to work with the Aftermath Foundation. She was kind of being shut out by them. As some of you have indicated, you know, I, I had a, a, a relationship with the Aftermath Foundation. They helped me get my mother out of there financially. They were the provider of a lot of goodwill that was provided by donors. 
they are the they were they're the custodians of goodwill in a way that's supposed to be then shared with people that need it and that is a good m mission that has to exist so i had a dialogue and claire was part of my like speed dial like uh in in that way um after all the stuff after thanksgiving everything got weird and with all these relationships between these different creators i work with aaron i worked with claire and everything has been getting awkward i'm just going to be honest about that but when I'm working with Miriam, somebody that I very much respect, this person should be a shell of a person. And she is to she is a, a formidable woman. She does not put up with anything. And if I had been through the amount of trauma she's been through, I wouldn't be like nearly as functional as I am today. I respect her very, very much. When she let's let's talk about this for a second. He was talking with Miriam. She came on one of his one of his uh streams and she helped him through talking about his childhood and the traumas that he went through there's a you know especially in a situation like this there's going to be some kind of bond that goes that goes in there and during talking with her outside of the stream he became aware of her frustrations about what was going on and as someone who respects her and is very th appears very thankful of how she helped him out he tried to make contact and he you know as he said apparently they had, had he'd had a good relationship with him he he speaks highly of the things that they've done the people that they've helped and i you know again here here we go you have someone who has been respectful they've been someone who has you know put a positive light on things that are going on in the aftermath foundation and this this is what he's getting for it i i just don't understand it i applaud him 100 on this i think this is a very mature very upstanding a very grounded person who's making these statements and i think that he was my in my opinion it appears that he was done very wrong in this he was sharing all this with me. I tried to help her bring this to the Aftermath Foundation president, Claire, like, hey, something's going on. I'd like you guys to address this. This was on the 21st, uh, about 10 days ago. Um, and there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If someone you're dealing with in an organization isn't getting you the help that you feel that you need or you're reaching out on behalf of someone, you don't, you know, and, and that person feels they're not getting the, the treatment or help that they that they're looking for, then absolutely you go to the next person up. In this case, to the president or the chairperson of that foundation. Nothing wrong in that whatsoever. And I sent an email, and um, as a result, they've stopped emailing me. Um, I tried to provide a dialogue and an opportunity for both Miriam and Claire to talk and then also hopefully you know have worked through whatever is going on with mike render and i feel like that effort failed um the only reason i'm bringing that up is i don't want people to see Miriam coming out and saying something as uh impulsive and it's not like she's tried other means she's been communicating at a certain point they didn't like what she was saying and um I believe that if, if a person is a survivor of the worst possible essay like she has, there needs to be some time and effort put into making sure that she gets exactly what she needs. And unfortunately, that did not happen in my view. So when I tried to advocate for her, I now feel like I'm on the blacklisted list. And it's not. It, it, is this just a reoccurring thing that's going on within this organization? You have other people coming out and saying that they got basically ghosted on questioning things you have all these things that are going on i haven't heard a response from anyone but mike you know if i'm wrong then by all means let me know in the chat there but i mean the president or chairperson of that organization should be addressing this why is it radio silent why is it someone who's needing help is getting ghosted why is it someone who you've had a friendly relationship with you've worked with you've dealt with before and have been on good terms why is that person now not getting any response in conversation and the way that the response way that a response is coming out 
is to put it into a blog saying this person is doing things that, you know, making you look bad or whatever. I, 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 I can understand why Mike came out with this video. I can understand why he would be frustrated. And I think he's doing a very good job of keeping us cool through this. I, I, this just keeps drawing more and more doubt in my mind. And I, I, how, how can you have a charitable organization and deal with things like this? How do you do it? I was trying to defuse something that I thought was not going in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now the world knows what a cheap ass I am to not pay for YouTube live. And I um, actually watch the ads. So there you go. All right. So, and, and I'll tell you in all honesty, I wouldn't have YouTube premium if the wife didn't get it for the YouTube music. So I understand completely what he's saying there. If people want to watch more of that video, they can find it. I think I was being pretty clear. Um, I, I did feel like Miriam wasn't getting the support and that is what I said. So I'm pretty sure that that was what Mike was referencing in his uh, blog post here. Um, Mike Brown made numerous false statements about what had transpired in the interactions between Miriam and me, including allegations that I had lied to her, that she had been gaslit, and frankly was a bit afraid of my answers. Let me get into why he is saying that, um, because he has invoked this uh, private email to the aftermath president where I was trying to address this. And I sent this on the 21st of January. Um, let me just go ahead and remove this. And add this. I'm not nearly as good as I should be at this stuff, so bear with me, folks. All right, so <clears throat> let me pull this. Hold on, up. if he goes for a little bit further into that, um, who was it? Uh, Mitchy B701. Mike Brown is such a level-headed guy. Y you know, the guy. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, this guy flies military helicopters, trains military pilots. He's squared away. All right. And I think he's doing a great job of putting this all out here. And I'm going to read you this email. This is addressed uh, to Claire Headley from uh, myself. And I had also CC'd Miriam on it. Uh, in addition, Miriam, um, I believe um, she also CC'd Claire with the email chain that I'm talking about this uh, in here uh, regarding Mike Rinder and the problems that she was having. Again, this is me writing a private email to the Aftermath Foundation president who I work with, and we'll get into more of that as we go. You see here, do you see the difference here? He is emailing Claire. He's making sure that Miriam's within the loop. Miriam is also making things visible, putting it out there, showing the information, and you get ghosted. I mean, it's handling it the I'm right way to um, hopefully head off something that I saw was a problem. And um, this wasn't this wasn't a, a a white paper to the world. This was uh, a private email. Dear, uh, hi, Claire. Good afternoon. I'm writing to you as a concerned friend on behalf of Mary and Francis. I assume you know much, if not all of what I'm going to present below. But I ask that you look at it with fresh eyes. In recent months, Miriam has been pursuing legal action against her father. Make sure that everything's good. OK, good. Uh, against her father um, for three years of, uh, for sorry, for years of sexual abuse she endured as a child. There are currently active investigations in both Australia and LA County. Okay, folks, before we get too much further into this, there may be some things that are going to be said or brought up that may be triggering or you may be sensitive to. So please be aware of that. Um, I'm not meaning to insult, trigger, or make anyone feel uncomfortable with things that are going to be said and heard. But this is a reality. This is what is actually going on. And this is what this young woman's been dealing with. Not only did she deal with such a horrendous thing throughout her childhood, but she also, from the reports that we're hearing, is that they tried to force her to be back with her father in I believe it was, Aust it was United Kingdom where he was at at that point. And they tried to send her there to try to rebuild a relationship. And this is the, the understanding I have of how this went down. So not only did she have to go through that, but she's forced to be part of the, you know, part of the organization where that man is at. 
I, I mean, you talk about just doubling down on trauma, doubling down on trying to break a person. Absolutely horrible. So it, I, I'm, I'm sorry if it does trigger anyone and I'm sorry if it upsets anyone. But this is real. This is something that this young lady has been dealing with since she was a child. Why she hasn't lost her mind, I don't know. And my goodness, that just tells me how strong a person she is and how strong her fight is. And honestly, anyone stopping or interfering with the attempts to thoroughly criminally investigate this matter, I got no use for you. If you're trying to in any way impede that investigation, I have no use for you. Be bringing forth criminal charges that are years overdue. The abuse, Miriam, the abuse of Miriam occurred between 1988 and 1992, most of which was while her father was in the Sea Organization in Sydney and Los Angeles. In 2003, the perpetrator divulged in an official police evidence recordings about the lengths and the methods used um, by INT, that is international management, or you know, referring to Scientology, to cover up the crimes he committed while remaining employed in the Gold Rep office, that's a gold representative office or gold nerve productions, for nearly a decade after the abuse um, of Miriam came to light. This is a growing body of evidence that directly points to Scientology management and OSA covering up the crimes of their own for their own PR damage control. In 2017, Miriam's story was shared on episode one, season two of uh, The Aftermath. Prior to the airing of this, Scientology sent an affidavit written to Miriam's mother to A&E. Details of KJ's affidavit was included in the episode, which stated her admittance. KJ is her mother. It's uh, Carrie um, is her first name. And uh, anyway, um, which is stated her admittance and knowledge of the abuse of Miriam. This particular document is court admissible evidence and is vital for the case with regard to what Miriam's mother knew at the time. Miriam spoke about this on um, Alex's podcast, and uh, she went into some detail about it on why this is important for her, both for her case and then also for her personally. In 2003, an officer in charge of Miriam's case asked Mike Rinder to obtain this affidavit. His flippant responses over a couple of months that followed caused serious concern for Miriam especially given his involvement with her mother as her Sea Org recruiter post Guardian's office. Her mother used to be in the Guardian's office and then was recruited by Mike Rinder to join the Sea Organization. See, I didn't know that. You know, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of this stuff, but I've, I've tried to keep myself distance from some of it so I could have a fresh look on it. But, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, how, how, how in, involved is he in, in a lot of this? flippant response to a criminal investigation uh kate murphy uh, thank you for being gentle about Miriam. she's been through so much absolutely i and if if you hear me you know getting raising my voice and and being a bit upset about this it it's because i've dealt with people who have been victims of these things you know and and i see what it does to them and i i see so many people that it destroys them on so many times. I, uh, you know, uh, how how could I not be concerned and gentle and and thoughtful of Miriam? Because she's she's a warrior. She's she's unbelievably strong. So yeah, I I, I got I've got nothing but respect for her. This is wow. And knowledge about um, OSA and all things flap left her feeling gaslit. This, I guess, is where I was saying that Mike that Mike made numerous false statements about me gaslighting uh, Miriam. So here, here's me saying that she felt gaslit. Um, I guess Miriam felt gaslit, and I'm and I'm lying about it. Um, Miriam has stated collaborating in recent. Sorry, Miriam has started collaborating in recent months. Um, and starting to share my childhood SO experience. This is when she began to confide in me and ask for my views and advice because she was being left with minimal feedback from Mr. Render about the events that should be pivotal to her to clarify the gravity of the situation. So this one paragraph right here is uh, right in kind of the center is the excerpt that Mike Render took out out of all this that I said. 
A little over a week ago, Miriam called Mr. Render with direct questions about how OSA and Scientology would have treated her situation. Mr. Render confirmed that it would have been handled at the highest levels with ultimate priority, but still insisted that he knew nothing about it. Miriam started to grow increasingly concerned and frankly a bit afraid of his answers. She called him back and directly asked him if he knew of other instances of abuse um, and their cover up at which point he got defensive and gave kind of a legal response to something to the effect of, I do not recall. Miriam at this point was left even more confused and, and even scared of his responses. In rapid succession following these calls, Mr. Render sent Miriam intimidating emails accusing her of recording the calls, suspicious that law enforcement was involved and clearly concerned that he had incriminated himself. Her fear increased and she reached out to me for advice. I advised her to simply not respond and to ex exercise some discretion as continuing to speak with him was becoming problematic. That's some really good advice there. I, you know, she's, she's heavily involved. She has so much going on. She's desperately seeking help. And sometimes when you're in a situation like that, you get focused on what it is you want. And absolutely, I can understand 100%. I do it sometimes. I put, I get the blinders on and, and I'm focusing in on, on my objective. And, and this situation, I think here gave her excellent advice. you you feel like you keep running into this wall and you're not getting any help. Now you've got intimidating and ac accuse, ac uh, accusatorial statements being made that, you know, it absolutely stop, step back, take a breath, let's find a different route to go with. I think that was absolutely the best advice he could have given. That seems like good advice. I told her, let the police deal with it. Yep. By the end of the week, Miriam got another email from Render stating that he had now had in hand the evidence that a &E was, um, from a &E that she was seeking, but refused to give it to her until she divulged whether the phone calls were recorded. He went on to question whether she was involved in a campaign to remove him from the board of Child USA, alluding to... Here's the problem I've got. I keep hearing so many different things. I, I hear from some people saying, yes, this, this document is real and it's out there. I hear from others, no, it was never real. Mike was lied to by the by people from A and E. I hear all these different stories, but here it is. You've got Miriam saying that she was told by Mike that he had that document. Where is it? Where is it? If you have that document, get it out there. Stop messing with this woman's life. Just stop. Think about if it was your wife or if it was your daughter or your son and they were running into this kind of BS when all they were asking for was help. All right? Even if that document doesn't do anything for the criminal case, she still deserves to see it and she needs it for closure in her life. She needs the ability to be able to heal. This just feels like there's a game being played with this young woman. This is absurd. Hey. To a conspiracy against him brought on by OSA. Miriam has indicated to me that she is genuinely concerned about uh, being retaliated against by Mike Render, and she is troubled by the fact that he appears to be actively withholding evidence from her case and using it as leverage against her. And then I, then I go on to say, what on earth is going on with this? Do you think that uh, scared and former traffic Scientology kids that escaped against all odds are working for OSA? I see this more as kids that were abused or be, are scared, pissed, and are able to speak without being controlled. Serge Gill, Liz Gale, Miriam Casavius are bitter and see that the former executives, namely Mike Rinder, as someone who is involved with their trauma. The whole, quote, OSA is working in operation, end quote, in this case simply is not true. I think Mike is paranoid about being implicated in a criminal investigation. Additionally, and unrelated to the above mess, Miriam told me that she sent in a request to the Aftermath Foundation to assist with funds for a procedure known as DSR. Miriam says that she now fears that due to her recent dealings with Mike Render, or sorry, I said Mr. Render, that she is now being blacklisted by the Aftermath Foundation, where he is the obvious opinion leader. I have stated, and I am uh, sorry, as I have stated previously, I am scheduled 
Uh, I am scheduling this exact procedure for both Emily and myself. My wife's name is Emily. I'm getting financial help through an organization providing support to special operations soldiers. I qualify for such help due to my deployment experience and, re and working directly with such organizations. I share this bit of self-indulgent information sh simply to show how absurd it is to try to call OSA. Respectfully, Mike Brown. So that is the email that I sent to Claire. Sorry, I didn't really advance that other page. I pulled up another screen so I could read it because that is ridiculously small and I don't actually think anyone could actually read that. So thanks for bear, bearing with me while I struggled through that all. Um, I think you did an excellent job with that. I think that was a well-written document. That email explains things very clearly. And I think, you know, without going in, it, there was no way of really condensing it down that much more. But, you know, I mean... He's literally someone who is a friend. And I, the way that he's sounding in this, I think that it's much like with me, it, wanting to be protective, wanting to be helpful, wanting to see some kind of finality to where this young lady can start moving forward with her life. And I, we, I know she has a family, all that, but she still has this chain that is holding her down. And she needs to be able to given, be given any tool that she needs to remove that binder, to be able to move on with her life, be happy, be healthy. And, you know, someone made the comment that, you know, about parenting and all that. One of the things that I've noticed is so many people who are raised in Scientology is there's such a disconnect. I was talking to someone today. And the, the statement that was made was basically I was born into it and turned over at, as, a, as a young child to this organization. And, you know, that just screams of what, I, what we hear out of Russia back in the day when they would take children from their parents, put them into these, these government dormitories and raise the children, not allowed to have feelings, not allowed to have emotions, just basically trying to churn out robots to do what they want. Look at all she went through and all the damage that it's done. And now that she's out, she's having to go to the people who were in the highest rankings with this, within this order and ask them for help. There's been a lot of people bringing that up, and I think that that is a very real concern. If you feel that these people were somehow involved in or covering up or in some way led to the kinds of things that caused these distresses in your life, how in the world can it be okay that the people who were high up that were overseeing what was happening, that you have to go to them. That's just causing even more trauma in someone's life. I, I, this, this isn't, you know, some fictional world. This is the world we live in and people are, organizations are operating like this. Why play games? Get her the help she needs. Um, but that that was the email. Um, so again, this is what Render's saying about me in his blog. You know, that according to Mike Brown, their behind the scenes collaboration has been going on for some months. So this is showing up in his blog when I was writing to this foundation to say, hey, you guys have a shit storm coming at you. Like you need to deal with this, please, or this is going to escalate. This is a private email that was sent to them to deal with this problem. This isn't me coming up with shit to do to like get after Mike Render. Like I, I, I promise you I have a full day of work and then I come home and have a life and I, I really want to be doing videos about my mother, but I also am not going to stand by when I'm, when I'm seeing a person that I'm working with struggling and I cannot, I, and I know you guys have heard it before. Miriam is amazing in dealing with this. She has tracked down and like has been working for justice for herself for years and is finally getting it there was help that was given to her by leah and by mike but this is something she has been working to get for herself and it is not insignificant 
the details in this case, if any. Let me tell you all something. Uh, in, in, in the last week, I have talked to a number of people who have been giving me information and I can't put any of it out there because I will not break the confidentiality of it. But there have been a lot of things that I have heard about what has happened within the Scientology world and within people who are now out. And it's it's amazing to me. And I can tell you that as an executive, a supervisor, a command officer, a chief of police, you know, one of the things is if someone came in and they filed a report against an officer, I would, I, you know, yes, I would have to, I would, you know, I'm not going to blindside anybody and, and go, oh, by the way, here's what happened. No, I'm going to, I'm going to call them and I'm going to have a talk with them. They're going to see what is said. But if that person turned around, that officer turned around and put that stuff out like this and appears to have picked, cherry picked different points of it and then use that to try to make themselves a victim, which is how this all appears, that officer would have been immediately suspended. And then they wouldn't just be looking at that complaint that was filed against them they would be looking at disciplinary action for what they did. If a person files a complaint, unfortunately, that may some way be forced out into a FOIA, through a FOIA, which is a Freedom of Information Act request. That may have to go out like that, but I can guarantee you 100% that name, personal information, all that, redacted. It wouldn't be out there. You, that officer, if that officer came out and did something like this, where they put these people's information in there and put it out there for the world to see and did it in that way, you know, I, they, it would not be a good, a good career for that officer. So, you know, to, for this to be an organization supposed to be helping people, supposed to be taking care of people. I'm flabbergasted. I, I am. And I, the more that I keep seeing what is coming out, the more I keep hearing, the more upset I'm getting and the more disillusioned I get by this whole thing. Anyone is familiar with the small case that just occurred uh, regarding Danny Masterson and um, uh, a bunch of essay against the Jane Doe's. This stands to be as big or significantly bigger than that. Yeah. The The way that I look at these two things is this would be the, the like if the, the Catholic church covered up crimes that had occurred outside of the church, you know, by, by like parishioners versus the actual offenses that were occurring by priests against children in the church. Like that's an absolutely spot on remark there. This could be, if the news and, and the media got hold of this and started following this case, this would be bigger than Danny Masterson. The only reason Danny Masterson case was so big as it was, was because he was a celebrity. That appears to be the only reason, you know, other than a few outlets, most of them don't, they, they seem for some reason to not report things about incidents that have happened within Scientology, but this is big. I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking, you know, in the case of Danny, and please do not think I'm downplaying what happened to any of the victims of Danny Masterson. I am not. I'm just saying this was a child that this happened to. And it wasn't just one occasion. But now we have another situation where essays were being committed and how many years after they happened, after these people are out of Scientology, are they finally able to find, try to go for justice, find justice for themselves? How many years? At what point are these institutions going to start going after Scientology for all these, all these things that happened? And I would like to know where they were at if they had laws that required reporting of these incidents, because that is directly going to go back and it's going to start working its way right up the food chain within that organization. And hopefully some people end up with seeing the gray bar motel. 
Uh, that's what I would like to see. And I would love to see these, you know, these higher organizations, you know, they call them the alphabet uh, agencies, FBI, whoever, whichever agency would handle it. I would like to know why you, here we have two instances of essays, one on multiple people and one is multiple times on a child. When are they going to wake up and actually do something about this? While they're very similar, they're very, very important. And I'm, and I was trying to, by bringing this email forward, which I did on the 21st, well before this stuff kicked off, trying to bring it to a point where it can get resolved. I'm going to be honest with you about the kind of person I am. I'm not the kind of friend who is going to tell you the shit you want to hear. I am the kind of person who's going to tell you the things that I think you need to hear that are going to resu result in a, a flaming dumpster fire if you don't do anything about it. And I will get into okay. more details about that going forward because I have a lot of things that I have to say. And, and I'll say that, you know, that's a lot of what I am is I, I'll try to, I, I try to, you know, I'm going to tell you, you know, you need to stop stepping in that, that manure because you're tracking it in your house and it's stinking, but I'm going to try to do it in a way where I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be empathetic and considerate as well, but absolutely. I'm, you know, as a friend, as someone who is looking out for my friends, I am going to try to let you know you're effing up. Come on now. Let's think about this. How can we correct this problem? And I absolutely respect that 100%. I, I would like to see that from people that I consider friends. You know, just tell me the truth. Just be honest with me. Just lay it out there. It, it may hurt my feelings. It may make me mad. But you know what? Once I get over the emotional, the emotional incident of it happening and I start thinking clearly, I will respect you more being honest and telling me what you think. That's why I talk to Marilyn Honig and Duncan Honig. That's why I have so much respect for them, because even though they may not say what I want to hear or what's going to make me feel good, they're going to tell me the truth. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. And if you're my friend, then you know that I'm going to come at you with the truth, too. I'm, I, But I'm going to try to word it in a way that it doesn't harm you more. I, but I want you to correct what's going on. And I completely respect what he's saying there. Oh, enjoying the drink there. All right. <laughs> I think we have um, exhausted the amount of time I want to spend on Mike Render's blog. Exactly. One thing I am going to point out to you, just because it seemed to be a mystery for Mr. Render, when you share details about a person's documents, you redact them. You don't put them up so that you... What did I just say? Mira, exactly. You don't put that person's information out there. You don't dox them to the world. All right. How many times we hear about people, uh, Aaron got swatted. He's been doxed. Now, Miriam, you're being, you know, are you, are you putting this person's information out there because you had a, a brain freeze moment and didn't think about it? Or did you intentionally put that person's information out there? A childhood SA survivor, did you intentionally dox them? That just feels like an intimidation thing to me. You doxed people. What kind of idiot would do such a thing? Let me proceed. Absolutely. All right. All right. So let me step back a little bit. So I'm involved in Mike Render's blog and it looks like I'm some sort of like co-conspirator conspiring with conspirators in this big thing. And there's like, there's years and years and years of evidence that Mike's going over. And I don't even, I don't even think that what he's saying is incorrect. Some, he's going through all this different OSA stuff. And now he's like, all these second gens are coming for me. Like I said, and I was trying to point out in there, I'm like, you have people that are upset at you because they're upset at you. Um, I had a similar thing happen to me. I don't know if anyone is familiar with Laura. Um, she has a channel, Laura FM, Laura and I were both at the international ranch together. I'm about, I'm 10 years older than Laura. So when I was an older, um, teenager, 
becoming Sea Org member and kind of an enforcer in her mind, um, she had a lot of scar tissue from remembering me. And when I was then coming out into this, you know, community, starting to share my stuff, Laura was very vocal that she did not like me. So I had, um, I could deal with this in two ways. Um, I could ignore Laura. Um, I could talk a whole lot of shit about Laura. Um, and, or I could call Laura and apologize. And I, and then if she asked me, would you be willing to sit down with me? Uh, say yes. And then sit down with her and we talk through it. And if anyone wants to see what that looks like, it wasn't easy for me and it wasn't easy for her. Uh, but it was something we both needed to do. And we did that. We did it twice. And I can honestly say that that was healing for both of us. Me saying these other people that are butthurt with Mike Rinder, rightfully so, are because I wanted Mike Rinder to deal with this. He's uh, he's on social media, aside from the fact that at the bottom of his blog, now he's like, oh, I'm going to back out from social media. You know, this is hard on my family. I, it probably is. But um, I got to say, damn, damn, son. Now, uh, don't think I'm coming across that this is sexist or you know, misogynistic or whatever you want to call it. But we're of similar backgrounds. We're military, I'm military and law enforcement, a paramilitary style life. And, you know, so you, you got to figure that the majority of my life has been in these, in these kinds of things. One thing about it, he stepped up and he faced it. He was honest. He was open. He, that is a true mark right there. That's a true mark. And that is something that needs to be respected. And it needs to be, we, you know what? I wish there was a way I could put this out a thousand times so people could see that. There's so many people nowadays that refuse to accept any responsibility. Gee, I wonder if that blog is something like that. But here is someone that you had another person felt in some way, whether they felt harmed or they felt scared of this person or they felt that there was something in the past that this person had done that had made them feel in fear and made them feel inferior. What did he do? He sucked up his pride, sucked up his ego, faced it, worked through it, not once, but twice. That is the mark right there. That's honor and integrity. Nothing but respect on that. Um, you're not here for comment, man. Like, if you want to talk about this stuff, we'll talk about when I get phone calls, when I send emails to the Aftermath Foundation here in a minute, because I'm going to get into that. What I didn't say last week was the response that I did get. I said I didn't get an email, but I got something, and we're going to get into that. Uh -oh. Um, about this? But I advised Mike, like, why don't you talk to these people? Most of these people are, are, are children that are now adults. They were children that are now adults that are freaking scared. And they have a lot of trauma, and they're trying to work through it. Absolutely. And they some of some of them are getting uh, therapy. Some of them are trying to work through it on their own. But as they're processing stuff, if they have something that they need to deal with you about, and you've you've elevated yourself up to here to like Mike Render and Leah Remini are at the top of the food chain, and then right under them we have the Aftermath Board, who's this public charity who somehow has this elevated position because they're custodians of this good work. By the way, I love the Aftermath Foundation and what it represents, but I think recently it's not. When you think of the Aftermath Foundation, you think of the bullshit and the drama right now, and it shouldn't be that way. And I'll get into that here in a minute too. So there's this like hierarchy, and we came from hierarchies, and uh, we don't want that anymore. Like everyone should be able to have their voice and be able to say their things. And when something's wrong, we need to be able to be honest and forthright with each other and bring forward these things so that they get addressed. So let me let me uh, hit on that. Um... That's a very, very good point there. Yes, you came from that organization where you had hierarchies, you had rank and file structures and all that. You're not there anymore, all right? I'm retired. I'm no longer a police officer. Yeah, a lot of the folks that are currently in law enforcement and folks that I knew when I was working that are now out of it themselves, yeah, they... A lot of them call me chief. Some of them that remember me as lieutenant, they call me lieutenant. 
But the fact is, is I don't feel and I don't expect them to respect me in a position of being uh, com- uh, a superior or uh, someone who shouldn't, you know, someone who is above them. I look at them as their equals, you know, especially those that I know that have retired. We're, we're equals. We made it through the fight. We made it to the end. Thank you, Chad. Um, and we're, you know, we're on equal footing now. That's how this should be. There shouldn't be any kind of hierarchy. There shouldn't be any kind of ranking structure. I don't care if they saluted you for 50 years, called you sir, called you ma'am, whatever. The fact is, is that you're out of that now. You don't deserve any further respect before because of who you were in there. And if someone shows you that respect, that's just simply because they respected you as that person. You know, it shouldn't be a matter of they had to fear you when they were in there. This is, I, I yeah, I, I, this, the more I keep digging into this, the more upset I'm getting. So if it seems like I'm a little hot around the collar right here, it's because more than once I have tried to give advice to the people on the Aftermath Foundation with this one specifically, and then backing up when the when all of the problem was happening with Aaron Smith Levin, and we were even talking even more than we were recently about stuff, and I was trying to say, hey, there's some things wrong with that that w- I wasn't listened to, and we're we're letting the the former PI guy, uh, the PR public relations guy from Scientology, do pretty much the same thing that he did when he was in Scientology. Don't respond, um, attack back. Like make people look bad, gaslight them. These are all like the same tactics and stuff, which I think are fairly transparent. When you look at them, you're like, this isn't great. Like, why aren't you coming on here and talking about it? You have these people that are, why aren't you here with me? So, you know, and, and how many times have I said it? How many times have other people said it? It looks like a lot of folks, and I'm not talking about Mike. I'm not talking about uh, Miriam. You know, there are a lot of folks who are no longer in Scientology but it seems like they're trying to carry that same mindset. They're trying to use the same tactics and the same, I don't know what you call it, the, the, you know, the basic programming that they're using in Scientology. And look at how he's, he's handling this. He's still praising the Aftermath Foundation. He's still showing respect but he, is he getting respect? Is he being treated properly? Is Miriam getting respect? Is she being treated properly? Uh, how many times have I talked about it, about the fact of don't defend, attack, attack, attack. Make yourself the victim. Make them the problem. Again, this is a person who suffered one of the most horrendous things that could ever happen to someone. Being treated this way, this is, thank you, Mike, for being ethical, honorable, and an upstanding person in this. That's what I think about that. I'm not happy about it. Um, but my my feelings against or with respect to Mike Rinder didn't just start with Miriam. So let's back up a little bit, and I'll try to go through this logically paint a picture for where I, where I am at in my mind about this so that you uh, hopefully understand me. Let me just look at the time. I'm already 30 minutes into this and it feels like I've been talking for about five other than the fact my, my mouth is dry. So while, while he's getting that drink folks, um, uh, you know, there's been a few people that have brought it up. If you can, please um, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribe the, um, all those help with the algorithms and I feel that we need to get this information out there as best as possible to honestly get things rolling. And again, I've said it probably a hundred thousand times, probably not, but I mean, that's how it feels. The fact is, is that we, if we're going to get politicians, if we're going to get these agencies going in and actually investigating and doing something about this, we, we need to get the word out there. The more people that see it, the more people that hear it, the more that we get it out there and we get it in their eyes. And we all know politicians normally don't do anything unless it's going to profit them or get them some positive exposure. 
So we need to please make sure we're getting this out to as many people as possible. All right. Life before the, uh, the series, Leah Remini, Scientology in the aftermath. Not many people spoke out about Scientology. Leah Remini came out and she was genuinely pissed about her experiences in Scientology. This is my, my reflections, my reflections of it. She didn't like what she was put through and she wanted to change it. So she came up with the plan and she got it approved however she did and came and, and was the producer on this show, Leah Remini Scientology in the aftermath. That show and Alex Gibney's work on Scientology going clear, uh, Scientology and the prison of belief were pivotal in changing the public perception of Scientology, hands down, 100% true. For the first time, Leah Remini was coming forth and giving examples and people's testimonies about what was actually transpiring in Scientology, and it was made for mass media. It was it was on everyone's TV. It was instantly a huge hit. Love mm -hmm. it. Leah Remini was came from a family that had next to nothing, and she has worked her ass off her entire life. This is my feelings about Leah, where she has got li literally rags to riches. And she has Absolutely. become extremely successful and did probably the biggest work to change the perception about Scientology. She had to do so through production companies and a series that had certain limitations. And, um, and the limitations of those are you have these little segments. They're about an hour of time, which means they're cut down to about 40 some odd minutes. There's only so much that you can do in that amount of time. And as these things, as these, these stories of these victims were being shared, they also had to go through editing. The production company had to decide on what they were going to actually include in it. And then the legal department had to vet every single thing that was done. They've talked about this and they're like, hey, we wanted to do more, but this was the best that we could do. I 100% agree that that, is, that was the limitation on that. Um, <clears throat> one con, like a, you know, not, not a, uh, the, the, it can turn to pros and cons. So a thing where it wasn't great was the people that were contributing to this didn't have a lot of control over their what ended up in their edit. And I think Miriam touched on that a little bit, as have some of the other people that have been in there. And a lot of times what was included in there would not have necessarily been what that person would have chosen. And it wasn't a full representation of their their story that they might have wanted to have out there. The other let me let me speak on this for a moment. Uh, a lot of you know that I I've made uh, appearances on Animal Planet, National Geographic, doing the reptile work and such. And I can tell you the way a lot of this stuff works out is you film for four hours and it gets cut down to about a minute. And that's very true. I can attest to that, having had to deal with it numerous times. And the fact is, is that you don't always get what you wanted to put, what you wanted out there, put into the final cut and edit that it goes out. So that is, you know, that is one of the things that, you know, it's, it's an honest thing. So he, he's telling the truth there. And a lot of people don't see how this, how this really plays out because you see what's on TV and I'm going to tell you, editors and the directors or producers, whoever's doing it, one of the things that they're doing is they are going to edit it down to where they feel they get the best reaction from the audience as to the content they're putting out. So that is 100% true. That is the, that's, that's the honest world of production, of television, things like that. That's how, that's how that works. So... Yeah, it's it it's not a uh, it's not something that is an unusual thing, um, you know. And a lot of people who've never had to deal with it, they that's that's something that they they get brought into really quickly and and aren't expecting it. And Lizeka, yes, I have spent more of my life working with reptiles than I have with um, being a law enforcement officer. I can tell you that I absolutely love them, I especially love. Venomous snakes and crocodiles. That's just how it is. All right. So let's hear some but more here. If I can figure out. I think there was no, there was no sort of support system for these victims. When they did that, they weren't compensated for it because that would have kind of uh, lacked legitimacy if they're being paid to then talk, you know, smack about Scientology. So most of these people weren't paid. Yeah. And then. Um, I can understand that. 
as a result, these a lot of these people were then fair gamed by Scientology. And uh, I think if anything could have been better there, if there would have been, and this is in hindsight and retrospect by somebody who's completely not involved in it, me just looking at it from the outside the way I see it, having some sort of um, trauma-informed victim advocacy would have been great for that because there were a lot of people that it re-traumatized. It just, that's, that's the way shit goes when you talk about that. All right, let me talk about this concept that is a very much a Scientology concept, which is called the greatest good. Uh, greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics. Everything in Scientology, the dynamics are the eight, uh, you know, um, like impulses. I think we're going to we're going to stop there. And I want to, you know, folks, um, I know and I, I had made it very clear it wasn't going to be I was going to wait till we got a little bit further in there into this. Uh, if you want to start putting your questions, comments in there, please, uh, please get those out there. And I will be very happy to respond to them as best as I can. Please remember, let's be, you know, open debate. Absolutely. You, I may not like what you got to say, but be respectful. Remember, it's this. We're all reacting to something that's happening to someone else. So please, you know, be respectful. Be empathetic about things uh lisa gillespie and ooh, thank you for that uh that super chat uh dual sympathetic reset dual sympathetic reset is a real strategy to help with trauma it's an actual therapeutic procedure yes i i was actually talking to someone about that today and it is amazing and apparently it is it, it it's doing some great things and it's really the Department of Defense is actually using it now. So, I, yeah, I truly believe in that. And in my understanding, that's what Marion was wanting to get. Um, let's see. Marion's only ask of uh, the Aftermath Foundation. Marion's only Aftermath Foundation ask. It doesn't require Aftermath Foundation to happen. About two to $4,000 or without insurance, we could help so many folks. Absolutely. I liked one of the things that, uh, that Mike said in this and the fact that the aftermath foundation is basically their, their job is to be the conservators of this money and to make sure it gets out and it goes to the people that it needs to go to. Uh, I really like that statement. Um, and thank you. Uh, I'm going to butcher your name and I don't mean to, I did Tarkina Tarkina Meyer it bothers me that Mike Russell is holding the affidavit that Miriam needs held, holding it hostage. If Leah wanted to do anything honorable, she would get get it to Miriam ASAP. Well, that's if that's that you know we have to look at it from the fact of does Leah have does she have that and does she have the um you know does she have the ability to you know, to actually get that to her. Uh, you know, I keep hearing so many different things. Yes, they had it. No, they don't have it. The, uh, they thought they had it. They were told that they that the producers had it, but now they don't. Uh, let's see, Lethenda, uh, please keep going. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get right back to it then. Uh, let's see here. All right. This is towards uh, uh, existing and surviving. And in Scientology, they're saying, hey, the thing that benefits the most of these is supposed to be the best. But like other religions, really what that boils down to is Scientology is always the best for everything. So everything that's good for Scientology is what's good for everybody else. And mm -hmm. your personal life, your, your family life, everything that is secondary to Scientology is put on the back burner and the organization and the mission is always placed first. People, yeah. people constantly, uh, while we're in, in, in Scientology, you're giving up your money, your education, your time, your family, all of these things go into being all of that uh, in Scientology. And the people that come out of Scientology have been in this mindset for their entire life. Um, and they are used to sacrificing as the first way that they start everything that they do in order to move this thing forward. And I'm sure all of them realize the gravity and the importance of that show. So they wanted to do that. But at the same time, 
we're, we're now entering a world where people do sacrifice in order to do their jobs and certain things, but that isn't a constant thing. Most people go through life and they're like, I need to do what's right for me, my family. And then you sacrifice and you do selfless acts in addition to those things. But really there is an importance that lies within yourself in the outside world that doesn't exist in the mind of a Scientologist. I just want that to be framed in there. So when Leah is going to make this show, Leah has Leah has the celebrity. Leah has the the vision, but she needs somebody with the access. She needs s some person that knows everything that, that you could possibly know about Scientology. And I'm not saying that Mike Rinder knows everything about Scientology, but Leah needs somebody with the inside baseball information to be able to translate all of these things from the international perspective. Absolutely. I know from working at that international base, there's a handful of people: David Miscavige. Mike Rinder, Marty Rathman, uh, you then have Warren McShane, you have, um, what is it, Will Hare, Greg Will Hare. you have a couple of these people that are just like the upper level echelon of people that are involved and know more than anybody else. And the fact that Rinder and Rathbun existed in the wild for her to be able to uh, approach and do this, she ended up, I guess, going with Mike. Um, I've heard people- And Nora, oh no, Nora hit on this in her live last night where she was talking about the fact that she was part of the, the crew and basically what she was doing was translating Scientology verbiage or Scientology speak so that everybody could understand what was going on. And I, that's, that's very real that you, you have to have things like that in any situation. Like you have people that, you know, say they're, they're investigating um, outlaw motorcycle clubs or 1% motorcycle clubs. You need someone who actually knows what the lingo, what the verbiage and all that is. And so this is this is very real. People say that, you know, she was going to, you know, go with Rathman first. I have no idea. I know that she ended up doing it with Mike and um, they did the series that they did. And it was um, very amazing. It was profitable. Um, it did work that had never been done before. And I'll say that, you know, again, I'll I'll. I'll reiterate what i said in either the last live or the one before that a lot of us wouldn't be in myself included would not be involved at this level with sptv or trying to bring an end to the damage that scientology is is doing had it not been for leah remini you know and uh i've i've heard that there was something that leah said either to mike or about mike brown and uh, I think if, if you listen to this, you hear what he's saying. He's being absolutely respectful in, in responding to this. I think, you know, again, I'm, I'm very impressed with how he's handled this. The, and after it was done, a lot of people got fair gamed. They then did a fair game podcast where they were then talking about these things and continuing to kind of spread the word. I don't have a beef with Leah. I don't have a beef with Mike Rinder. Aside from the things that I'm going to talk about, which again, I'm going to try to keep specific. I think the we, the the work is important, but at the same time, the, the details are also important. You can't exist in some of these, you know, uh, areas and know the things that you know without also knowing some of the dirty tricks and some of the secrets. And Render said that, I think in a lot of his videos, he kind of uses words very craftily and he always says Scientology and OSA and then if he does talk about himself he's like I, I used to be involved in that and this is how I know but he's never using I we me very often it's most of the time projecting onto OSA. that's something that I also agree with quite a bit and something I've been thinking about a lot lately is when you hear the horrible things that have happened it the way that he sounds to me is he removes Mike Render removes himself from the fact that he was in charge of OSA and the acts that happened. And again, there's the feeling that there's no owning up or standing up and saying, yes, I was involved with this and I feel horrible about what I've done it's it, what I hear most of the time is, well, OSA did this Scientology did that, but has you know, from what I've heard, I, it seems that has no problem pointing out the things that he feels make him look good. 
that's part of being a stand up person is you accept the good and bad in yourself. You make amends the best that you can for the bad that you've done. And, you know, I, one of the things about it is I, I don't like when people say nice things about me. I don't want to, I don't want to get this mentality of, Oh, I'm such a good guy. I, I just try to be who I am. But one of the things about it is you take responsibility for what you do and what you've done. Osa and all that. And that's his prerogative and the way he wants to address it. I don't like that, but it's not my show. So uh, there you go. So, um, all right. So all of this kind of is going forward. A lot of these creators are out here. This SPTV thing's blowing up. We now have this Aftermath Foundation that was started, all of these good works. And, and pretty much everybody that is in any of these chats, aside from whatever OSA bots are sniffing around, happy that there's discontent in the world. But really, it still makes Scientology look like absolute crap. So everyone is out here, and there's this, there's this momentum. There's this movement. There's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, now we're going to fast forward to me. I help my mother get out. I, as I talked about in there was, um, was helped to, I helped my mother do the applications for her to get, um, relief and help from the aftermath foundation. The aftermath foundation, as has been being talked about is a public charity that is supposed to do good works in order to help people transition from a life inside Scientology to the outside world. That is their mission statement. And that that public charity then has boards of directors who then are um, that are on the board or people that are custodians of that good work, uh, that goodwill and that power. And that that power is, is a is a thing that they're saying, I want to help these people. What I have seen is the board of the Aftermath Foundation has somehow made more of the their existence has become what people are focusing on. And that is because of a lot of the drama, but it's less about the work and more about like this prestigious position. And I think that these boards should be like, if you're using this board as a springboard for something else, like that's too many boards. If you're using the existence on a public charity in order to kind of elevate yourself, I think that that's a little cheesy. Um, I, I want to, I want to hit on this. Um, talking to Marilyn Honig and a response that she, she was telling me about this response she had gotten from someone on the board where she was expressing some concerns. She was expressing things that she was really worried about. The response that she got was basically, Hey, I got your email. Let's remember, let's keep our eyes on the prize. Let's keep on this mission. The thing is, is, the Aftermath Foundation, is their job to bring down Scientology or is their job to help those coming out of Scientology? And my understanding was you have two separate worlds. You have the world of you're on the board of the Aftermath Foundation and your job is to try to help those coming out of Scientology get on their feet and be able to survive within the secular, which is a non-religious world, after leaving the religious world. The other world, the other side of it is, is that you're, you have a YouTube channel or whatever that is fighting Scientology. And yes, you can take that YouTube channel and do, you know, support the Aftermath Foundation. And of course, the Aftermath Foundation can show you know, support and yes, we believe in it. That's what we're looking for is to bring this down. But that shouldn't be the focus of the Aftermath Foundation. The focus should be helping those people that are coming out. From my understanding of how that how that this is set up, that's what it's supposed to be. Not, you know, not building YouTube channels, not building yourself up. It, the focus should be on the victims of this organization. The, the work should come first and then everything else should come second. And, Absolutely. and, and I think in a lot of times that was the way things look to be happening on the outside world until we fast forward to the situation where we have Aaron Smith Levin, um, Aaron Smith Levin and the falling out with the aftermath foundation, um, was from my understanding. And again, I was trying to work with all of these people. I was friendly with all of these people because they were, 
they were managing these funds that were helping my mother until she was able to get some of her money back in order to be able to help herself. Um, and I was noticing that there's a little bit of discontent, but like I said, people don't always get along. Um, and as I and I'll, I'll, I'll fall back to what Marilyn Honig said about being on the board where she's at is that, you know, the other board members, they don't, you know, they don't do a lot of public functions. And I was talking about this being on, you know, I gave an example of the library commission. I saw the people from the library commission. If I was out on my job as a police officer, or I saw them at the meetings for the, the commission. We didn't go on vacations together. We didn't hang out together. And the, the reason for that is, is that that could lead into conflicts of interest. Say you have something that you want to achieve. You should be able to effectively debate for that at these meetings to try to get the number of votes that it takes to get it passed. When you start having these outside relationships, and I'm not talking about, you know, romantic or anything. I'm talking about friendly relationships, those kinds of things, going on vacations together, you know, that can lead to, you know, it can lead to a lot of problems. And it would, it would certainly have an air of impropriety about it. And uh, the air that there may not be this nonpartisan way of doing things. So, you know, that's, you know, that's, I, I just, I was it, to, it's a real problem. Sharing my mother's story. I have been trying to, it meant so much for me to be able to give back to this foundation that the first videos that I did sharing my mother's, her, their story or her story and everything that we had been through, I did it with Mike Rinder and Claire Headley. And we did it in two episodes over the course of two days. And uh, I wouldn't talk with anybody else until I talk with them about all of this stuff. Um, I then, um, did a an interview with Leah Remini and Mike Rinder where Rosemary was actually on and sharing. And that was a bit awkward for some reason. I wasn't sure. Like usually my mom is very easy to talk to and she felt uh, she felt very nervous during the entire interview. And I didn't really understand why. Um, I just figured it was a lot to deal with, you know, setting up and everything like that. But we went through the thing. Um, so the things with Aaron start to happen and it seemed like he was kind of pushed out in such a way that he wasn't happy about it. And uh, Mike says a bunch of stuff in, in his little blog post about the stuff with with Aaron. And, and I'm sure that that's Aaron's purview to respond to that. And I think he has um, fairly well. And I'm sure he'll speak about it again because the, yet again, somebody is bringing up his name. And I can honestly tell you that any of the stuff that I'm dealing with right now, Aaron Smith Levin is busy in L.A., you know, getting arrested and doing whatever and dealing with the LAPD and all that sort of crap. I can I can guarantee you he doesn't have time to even barely take my calls. This is. Aaron and I at best text every once in a while and not very often. He's actually recently, he's been so busy. He doesn't even text me back. And I, I can, I can mirror that sentiment. Uh, but I, I, you know, Aaron does, does text me back or, or call me and, you know, and he'll, he'll, he, Hey, I got an idea. Are you interested in jumping in a live? You know, that's, that's generally how it works. I generally find out I'm going to be in a live with Aaron about uh, anywhere from an hour to two or three hours in advance. And I'm always happy to do it. But he is hugely busy, folks. He really is busy. And I just, I feel bad for the fact that here he is. He's one of the people who helped to found this organization and to be forced out. But we we see it time and time again. I, I you know, I don't know if he's if he's openly talking about it or not. But the other person I feel real bad for is Luis Garcia. I really feel bad for him. And he, you know, from what I've seen, he hasn't come out and made any real big public statements or anything about it. But, you know, that's someone else that I I, I, I really feel bad for how things ended for him. All right. So I'm going to give you an opinion about something, and I'm going to preface this with, um, trigger warning, uh, about, um, essay. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this as vanilla as possible because I don't want to share too much about my mother, but in this book, a billion years, Mike, uh, Mike Render, he, at the back of this book, 
um, thank some people. And I'm just going to kind of take a look at it. And, and into this thing, he goes, um, my friends who helped me with unreserved kindness and generosity when I had nowhere to go, Tom DeVock, Ronnie and Biddy Miscavige, Jim and Sarah Mortland. That's cool. Let me, as anyone who has um, mentioned uh, that I've shared any of my mother's story about, Ronnie Miscavige is um, a, a figure in my life and in my mother's life that is not a great a memory for her. My mother worked for Ronnie for a number of years and enduring uh, the large portion of time that she was working for him. And he's the, the brother of David Miscavige, Ronnie Miscavige Jr. Uh, he was involved in very unethical um, things that were uh, sexual in nature while she was his secretary. And he would expose himself to her. He would uh, make uh, her give him massages. Um, it, it, and he would sometimes grope her. So those are the things that would happen. Now, one instance that Rosemary shared with me, and she shared this with me after all of this stuff started transpiring and the the Ford Green response came uh, with the fleas and dogs. And I knew that this was going to blow up. I, I talked to my mom and I said, hey, mom, this stuff's going to blow up. Um, I, I want you to know about it because I don't want you to be kind of caught off guard. Because for her, she's it's hard for her to quantify the importance of these things. Like I know if literally all this, like if everyone stops watching all this stuff, we'll just do it another way. It really doesn't matter. It's the work's going to continue no matter what. But for her, it seems significant. So um, I told her about this stuff and she said, Mike, I need to tell you something. And I'm like, well, what is it? She's like, I, um, I haven't told you cer a certain thing about Mike Rinder. And I, I do have this recorded. I'm not going to play it because I'm not going to put her through this indignity. But she, she shared with me, she's, she said, Mike, um, one time on a Sunday morning, uh, Kathy and Mike Rinder, they were in their room. The Rinders and the Miscavages, uh, they shared um, a residence. And then uh, Ronnie and Biddy were in their room, and I'm pretty sure Biddy was asleep, dead tired, because she was always working so hard. Ronnie had come out in his towel, and through his towel had an erection, and um, fully visible, and uh, asked, and I was out there ironing clothes, and trying to make coffee, and trying to do what I was supposed to do. And he then uh, said he needed a back rub, so he she had to go over there and start rubbing his back. While this was happening, and he had himself exposed, Mike Rinder walked out of Mike Rinder's room and saw this happening and said to Ronnie, Ronnie, what the hell are you doing? Giggled a little bit, grabbed a cup of coffee and went to work. I'm going to tell you something about this isn't me just retaliating against Mike Render because I think he's a jerk for putting up that that blog, which I kind of do. Um, my mother is not the kind of person that tells me lies, and she has absolutely no reason to tell me that unsolicited. She told me that, and I felt she told me that about a um, <clears throat> a day before I did my last video post, where I was trying to be extremely gracious in that last video um, with Mike Render. And I think I did a pretty good job. I, I tried to keep it. I tried to compartmentalize the way I was feeling, but I was very, very upset. I felt humiliated that I put her through sitting with him and Leah to do that video, not because she was in front of Leah, but because I made her sit in front of Mike. She went on to kind of say that she then went to that re rehabilitation project force for six years. Mike Rinder was still in that organization working there and knew what she had been through with Ronnie and that she was the one being targeted. He was still working there. She remembered one time when the executives came down to the mill. Um, it was, uh, she uh, recalled um, Guillaume Lesserve, um, Mark Yeager, uh, Jenny Linson, and um, Mike Rinder and possibly some others were there. And they were there in all of their suits and get up looking down at all of these RPFers that were a lot of them from the international base because they had been kicked out, trying to figure out what to do with them. And she told me that she never felt so low in her life. So I am looking back on saying, hey, mom, it's really important for us to get this message out. And she's on board like, yes, I'm going to share all this. And I'm like, hey, we can do this uh, video with Leah and Mike. They're willing to do one with us. What do you think? Okay, and I didn't know why she was acting kind of strange about it. And um, honestly, the video is not the best video we've done. I don't even think Leah posted it on her site. It's the edit of it's a piece of crap. I, 
Leah didn't edit it, but whoever did, it wasn't. This hurts. This really hurts. I'm sitting here thinking if this was my mom, if this was my daughter, if this was my wife, And to think that she was punished and she was made to do this groveling work, you know, the RPF. What he's got, what Mike Brown has to be feeling right there has got to be absolutely heartbreaking. And you see what kind of man he is. He's still not coming out and he's not bashing him. He's not attacking him. If it was me, I'd be in prison right now. I'd be in prison because I'd be making sure that that woman who is so significant in my life never had to feel fear from those people again because of what I had to do to take care of it. I'd go to prison for it. And, you know, of course, I, I have to preface it with, you know, if this is this is true, which I absolutely believe it is. And that was the response from Render. And he's still acting the way he is. And that was me. He'd be wearing dentures, at least. I just, the, I, I have so much respect for Mike's, Mike Brown's self-control. I don't know. My goodness. That's, that's so horrible. I, I don't know how, to, I don't know how to respond with that. I don't, I don't, I really don't. And yeah, I appreciate everyone being adult about it, being understanding and compassionate in, in the chat there, folks. I really do. This, this is breaking my heart. This is literally breaking my heart. I'm going to keep going through it. I, I'm not enjoying this. Like I can tell you that. It wasn't great. The video was rushed. It wasn't a great representation of her story, but <clears throat> I had the celebrity on there. I'm going to obviously post it. I felt horrible about putting her through that, but I did. Um, and um, I tried to compartmentalize my feelings about that. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, it is what it is. So, so Mike is willing to thank Ronnie Miscavige in his book. He also thanks Aaron in this book, um, but he's willing to continue to have, I guess, you know, admiration for Ronnie. <clears throat> Ronnie ended up leaving the C organization. He went on to get uh, arrested by the FBI for solicitation, um, similar kind of crap. But not only that, it was solicitation on one of these um, massage parlors uh, that the women that were involved in it were trafficked uh, and were... Oh. <laughs> Oi, oi. Um, assuming everything is true, which I do, this led to someone going even further in these acts with women who were, were human trafficked.
if this isn't making your resolve to want to bring down this organization that much stronger, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you need to, to, to get that fire lit in you to want to see the end of this organization and see all these people who were involved in these things brought to justice. I, I can't believe this. I absolutely cannot believe, you know, I, I, we've heard stories, we've heard things, we heard about the, you know, forcing children to work. But I mean, when the extent that everything's going on in this, WTF, FBI, what do you need? And then on top of it, to thank him in the book, to thank him. And, you know, let's be honest. We've heard Aaron talk about it. We've heard other people talking about it. When Mike came out and he didn't have a job, he didn't have a way to support himself, Aaron got him work. Aaron got him so he was able to support himself and his family. And this is the thanks that he gets. And look at Rosemary doing what she's supposed to do, being violated was not part of that. Being treated like that was not part of what any religion should bring out there. And then on top of it, to violate her trust, to violate her, and then to put her in punishment and stand over her like you're a deity looking down on parasites. What kind of people are these? Being put in situations where they were literally like trafficked children or young adults that were then made to be prostitutes. So this is the kind of person that Ronnie gets a gets a shout out in the book. And when um, Rosemary read that, she was kind of offended because she had already come out and she, we've shared her story already. But it's he's still making headlines in this. So what is my point in bringing? Think about how strong a person Rosemary is. I mean, look at look at Rosemary. Look at Miriam. The strength in those two alone. Just the strength in their character. They could pull down a mountain. Wow. She hid this from her son, and I would say that she probably did so because she didn't want it to damage him as well. But she had to come out, and she had to tell him. And then the guilt, the regret he probably faced, realizing that he had brought her in front of this. But, Mike, if you're listening, you you didn't know. You know, you found out afterwards. Wow. Wow. Bringing this up and why am I so irritated about the way that the Aaron Smith Levin thing was happening? Aaron, Aaron, they didn't want to associate with Aaron Smith Levin because he violated uh, whatever code of conduct existed on their board. <clears throat> What's that code of conduct at now? It was strong enough to get rid of Aaron. Where is it now? It seems a little suspect. Meanwhile, other people were added to the board that were obviously Mike Rinder had their ear that were previously part of it. And then it seemed like this whole power struggle that went on. I didn't like any of it. And I was vocal with Claire and Mark about this at the time because we were all texting. We were starting to um, work on a documentary uh, for my mother where we we're going to record a bunch of stuff. And right before Thanksgiving, we had uh, Rachel Hastings came out uh, and she did a bunch of filming with my mom. Rachel does amazing work. She's a, an absolute professional. She came out and the, the whole idea was we are going to make a, uh, a fundraising video for the Aftermath Foundation. What can I say other than absolutely? Like we wanted to do this. Claire had a, like Claire and I had been collaborating. Like we came up with this 
uh, grant that could be in my mother's name for like the children of the children that got out of Scientology so that we have a generation completely free of the abuse of Scientology. Like that's on the Aftermath site. And I love that. And then we had this other plan. We were going to make this documentary. So Rachel came out. We did all this stuff. I think that they were getting a Kelly Copter involved in it and all this. At the end of the uh, recording, Rachel mentioned something to me. She's like, we're really excited to be able to produce something of this quality. And I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. You came out here with all your stuff. Rachel is an actual trained cinematographer. She's not just like me with an iPhone. She is the real deal. She mentioned to me, this is going to be amazing when we can edit this and bring it to a film festival. And I was like, wait, what? Um, yeah, to be able to get this in front of people, we can see if, you know, we can get a streaming service to buy it or something like that. And I was like, ah, I thought this was just a, um, a fundraiser for the foundation. I, I didn't, we didn't even talk about any of this. Like you, we're talking about monetizing this. I, I didn't know that that was the plan. And, um, she's like, oh yeah, well, we had had some meetings about it. Um, I had a meeting with, you know, Claire and, um, Kelly and Mike, and we had already talked about it and I was caught off guard by this. My mom knew nothing about it. I okay. Uh, let me get this straight. You approach someone who has an amazing story to help the whole purpose of it was to raise funding for the foundation. But you never discuss the fact of monetizing it on that kind of level when the whole thought process was this is going to be like one of those clips we put on our website. Uh, other people within the community play it on their their channels all in the hopes of helping to raise money for the foundation. Where was the monetization going to go in this? And you're using someone's heartfelt story and the abuses that they dealt with as a catalyst for this monetization, but yet in that blog itself, there's this talk about people doing things for clicks, for making money. Hypocrisy is all I can think of. I I am so disillusioned right now. I am I I can't tell you how I feel. I I'm going to get demonetized myself because I'm or my my video will get banned because I just want to go off on a whirlwind of vulgarities and obscenities i i'm i'm shocked i had a problem with this in two for two reasons one i wasn't informed this was the plan people were having meetings about my mother's story without her or myself being involved in uh the conversations and the actual production plan like kelly was sent money to be involved in this and like in resources and Rachel was contracted. And I thought this was all just like generating good works and um, money for the foundation. And then to find out that this is going on, I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head, like, what the hell are you talking about? And then um, another thing is I was never able to ask my mother, mom, do you want to be on Netflix? Like, do you want to be like, do you want to be on, like, I know we're doing this stuff on YouTube. That's like kind of niche. Like people are only going to watch this if they're wanting to see this stuff. It's not like somebody that's doom scrolling on, you know, fucking Netflix trying to watch, you know, all of the nasty shit that they can watch and like, oh, let's find this now, this other documentary. It's it's a different feel. And, and, and it just was like, why? And it was like, why, why wasn't this part of the conversation? So I, I texted, um, I had already talked to Rachel and, and I mentioned it to Claire and she's like, yeah, we have had a meeting. I really apologize. She was fourth. Okay. So let me be um, very open and honest. I, I spoke with Kelly Copter. And Kelly and I had talked about how she had done some, she was going to be doing some editing for something for the Aftermath Foundation. And that she, it, basically the way is, is it, she felt, she was disgusted. And she removed herself from it. I didn't realize this is what she was talking about. And let me tell you, Kelly Copter, I just grew so much respect with her for her in this conversation where she's telling me how she stepped down from something that could be making her money because of her 
her ethics. <sighs> that is just, oh my gosh. But um, yeah, um, someone had made the comment that we're two hours into it. I can, I can use profanity. I'll, uh, I, I understand that it wouldn't do that. And I know I was just using that as a point of reference because uh, I actually wasn't going to do it. That's not who I am. I don't, I don't speak like that. I try to, yeah, I, sometimes the old cop in me comes out and you will hear vulgarity out of me. But for the most part, I try to keep if I try to keep my my language to the fact of if I can't say it in front of my wife, if I wouldn't say it in front of my wife, my mother or my daughter, then why would I say it, period? So that's why you don't hear a lot of vulgarity out of me and things like that. Uh, my my life after becoming a father has been about the point of I want to be someone my children can look up to and respect and realize that their father can keep control of himself. And I do apologize to each and every one of you. I have been loud. I have been angry. Um, and I know that's typically not me. But th th this is this is tearing me up. I am I am so thoroughly disillusioned, so angry. And I've got so much I've de got to decompress from on this. And the thing is, is that I'm not the one who was the victim here. And I'm I'm that angry. Maybe it's the fact of, yes, the most the majority of my life has been about trying to protect those who can't fend for themselves. I will say that that may be one reason why I am acting and feeling the way that I am right now. But this is, this is horrendous. This is horrendous. This is supposed to be a religion. I mean, we've, we, I've said it many times before. This is supposed to be a religion. I've never, how many people have ever seen a religion that treats its congregation like this, its members? And, and thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy Gonzalez. Um, let me get into some of these because I, I mean, this right now is I'm, I'm. This is such an emotional roller coaster. It's not believable. You're not alone in your ang anger. So many of us feel this way. Thank you. Thank you, Brock. Thank you. Um, you know, and this this isn't about me. It, it's not about me. I yeah, I'm. I'm showing my emotions on here. Um, but it's not about me. M Rosemary, Marion, Mike Brown. They're, they're the ones who need your, your support, your, your love, your sympathy, your empathy. They're the ones who deserve this. I, I don't, I, 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 I you know, this is going to twist my mind for some time, but the fact is, is that Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I got, my mind's going a bazillion miles an hour. Let me get to some of these, these supers. Cause you you folks have, you've, you've put your money down on this and I, I can't ignore it. Uh, Robin Hanson, Leah has her own court cases happening. It wouldn't be wise to do anything to endanger her, her case. She can help others once hers is finished. The amount of damage that she can do with this lawsuit I absolutely agree with that. Um, and that may be one thing that's going on as her attorneys may be telling her, do not get involved. And she may be screaming at people in the background. We don't know it. Uh, why, Tommy sees cat. Why would anyone donate to the aftermath foundation anymore? Money goes to a crisis PR firm and attorneys that bully survivors now with NDA forms. Ah, uh, yeah. And I'm going to be getting into that in another live uh, there needs to be a there needs to be a new renderless foundation. I don't know if it's just render that it needs to be less of. Um, and my my thoughts, um, Lisa Gillespie, exactly how humiliating that it talk about humiliation. Hey, there's my buddy Marilyn. 
Poe, you and Mike Brown are honorable men. Thank you for standing up for what's right. Thank you. And, and you know what, Marilyn, every time you say something like that, it, it, it really hits home because I have so much respect for you and Duncan. I really do. Love Rosemary. Thank you, Poe. Like, please. Robert Van Leer. Absolutely. Ah, folks, what a roller coaster. Chad, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I have to process this all, Poe. I didn't see any of this coming. That's really, uh, yeah, I don't even have words. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a person who spent the majority of his life working in chaos, and that's where I thrive. And this has got me jumbled up. Mike, uh, if you're watching, I know you'd said that you were gonna you were gonna watch but not jump in, and and I completely understand. I hope that in no way have I insulted you. Have I done anything that causes insult or any more any further humiliation to you? I I, I have nothing but absolute respect for Mike Brown. And hopefully Mike will be on here soon so we can talk about the efforts that he's made in getting help for his mother. I mean, I'll, what I see is a son who loves his mother and is trying to do what's best for her and help her out. That's what I see here. And I see someone who the, what I, what I'm seeing from him is, is I see someone that is trying to help work his way through that trauma by being honest and open about everything. I, Oh man, oh, my gosh. Um, Lisa Gillespie, now the truth warriors are finally listening. Thanks, Poe. Are you listening, FBI? Mother love? Absolutely. I'm going to put a link in here. In the chat is a link from the United States government. How to find out who your representative is in Congress. I would ask that you use that link and send out some emails. And if you want to know how to do it, I did a video talking about reporting Scientology and how to do it in a way that hopefully will get you seen and heard. I, I'm, 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 I'm done playing. Yeah, I don't even know where to start, Paul. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, Lathanda, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to say, but there's more. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We'll get through this and push through the last of it. It's killing me. But it's it's not my story. It's Mike's. Try and, with me. I then texted about it in the group text that we had uh, to Mark Headley, and he was like, what? I know nothing about this. So that must just be Rachel's thing. And I'm like, no, Claire already mentioned you guys are having meetings about this. And then Mark stopped talking to me about it. Uh, we kind of went on to another subject. So it was, so we had kind of realized like, Hey, we need to come up with a plan. Like if this is going to be a thing, I need you guys, like we need to sit down and figure out what this is. Like my mom needs money to live. Like we have some money, but senior living is expensive. If there's going to be some money that gets made on this, let's, let's make sure that we don't, like leave out the person that story it's about like this. I agree 100% here. And he's, he's, he's spitting truth. She's a senior. She's come out of this organization. What kind of skills did she have when she came out? How many people we heard about come out of Scientology can barely read and write. All right. And she's a senior. It's not like she's going to be able to go out and start a new career. She deserves to be compensated. This isn't like some like random thing that no one knows about. Her story is very visible at this point. Um, and, you know, it's the story already exists. So it's not like, you know, her getting mon monetary benefit from it would be a problem. Like if we're going to do something, we need to talk about this. I need a we need a plan. Yeah. And that's where he kind of left it. Then the whole blow up happens around November. This was the. Literally two days after, two days after all of this, ha all of the filming that we had done, where in, it's now uh, in the United States, uh, Thanksgiving break, all of this shit blows up. And um, I saw 
And I know Mike in his blog, he said, I'm, my bad, I'm finally apologizing for saying keyboard warriors. I saw the response that was going on. They're like not taking the comments like, oh my God, we've got to push this down. And like, they're not talking about the fact that Aaron's pissed and did a video. And then they started doubling down on not answering the questions, deleting comments. And I was like, what are you guys doing in the text? This isn't cool. And then um, continuing to then double down and do another video where they're like, we're going to show the emails from from Aaron and some of them. And then Aaron did his big Mia Copa on rabbit. And then it all just spiraled out of control. So as this was happening, certain creators felt they needed to at least say something. I put up a little thing trying to be supportive of everybody. Like, Hey, I try to work with everybody. I've asked Mike for advice several times. Like, I hope this all gets sorted out. I don't think that, you know, let's everyone try not to judge is kind of, I just put it as a community text because I, I didn't want to do what's like Sterling and and Kelly went on and they gave their opinions. And let me say, if you'll notice back during that time when all this was happening, before I found out about a lot of this crap, um, you know, I, I stayed out of it. And I made it very clear when people were asking me, look, I know Aaron. I talked to Aaron quite a bit. I have a lot of respect for Aaron. Aaron's always been honest with me. He has always given it to me straight. So I don't know Mark, Claire, Mike. I don't, I don't know Amy and Aaron's the one I know. Aaron was the one that I was standing behind because I knew him and I had interpersonal interactions with Aaron and I'm, you know, so he's the one I supported in all this, but I wasn't out there going against the foundation. I wasn't going after the people on the foundation who had removed Aaron, uh, and I, I mirror what he's saying here, but he had the actual contact with those people and he's behind the scenes telling them this ain't, this ain't cool. This ain't right. I, I, I completely understand that. Sterling and I are extremely close friends. He is probably one of my closest friends in the world. We were on the phone talking after he has done his video and he was like, man, he was like, that was intense for me. I, I felt really like worked up doing the whole thing. And we're talking as we're talking he gets a text message from Mark Headley and um, here is this is the last text message that I actually he gets a text message from Mark Headley that I had been texting and the text message from Mark Headley said, hey, man, you need to take your video down. You're going to look really stupid after we put up our response to Aaron and Sterling and I are on the phone. So I then text Mark and I'm and I say and I say Sterling just texted me super butthurt. Sorry. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a savage, uh, super butthurt and confused about you being mad at him uh, about his video. Did you not watch it before you texted him? He was a bit critical of your video. You and Mike did as am I, but I think him doing it saved a lot of drama when he immediately was able to then go on a different video with Mitch and Rachel and that he didn't even need to address it at all with them. Keeping Mitch and Rachel completely out of it. I respect him for doing that. He also should be able to share his opinion without being looked down on the two, uh, the two voices between, uh, sorry, the two videos between you and Aaron were a complete mess. Uh, he even asked people not to unsubscribe from anyone and just to keep focus on the cause of, of exposing Scientology. I am confused as to what is happening. None of us are in the Sea Org anymore. Um, Mark didn't answer me. This was the last email or sorry, the last text message that I ever have had between myself and Mark. I, I, I want to make that, that point again. Um, Aaron came out, he did a video about what was going on. Then he moved on. He didn't get involved in this whole thing with Miriam and, and Mike Render. He stayed out of it. And he stayed out of it because he didn't want it to look like he was coming out to attack Mike after, over what had happened with the, with the Aftermath Foundation. He only came out and responded when the blog came out and insults were hurled at him. You know, I, wa I want you all to keep that in mind. That's, you know, think what you want about Aaron but he's a stand up guy. And I think that, you know, a lot of people, Aaron gets a lot of bad 
bad thoughts, a lot of bad people look at him like, oh, he's wild. He does this. He does. Aaron is a grown person. He handles his own thing. He, if he does something wrong, he'll take responsibility for it. And I'll, I'll tell you 100%, he has my respect and he has my loyalty. He may not have time to get back with me. He may not have time for me because his life is so busy and is so chaotic right now, but he has my loyalty and he has my respect and he has my friendship. And I just wanted to make that point that even when he was being attacked, when he was being wronged, he still stayed out of things until he got drug into it. I, I just wanted to make that very clear. I was like, why, why are you telling another creator to go fuck himself? Like, who are you to tell him that? Um, so I, I tried yeah. to address that and then, okay, now that's happening. So hmm, oh. I'm not feeling super great about this relationship, the stuff with Mike Rinder, like it's, and, and Claire and Mike. And, and as I was continuing to talk to Claire, sorry, I, I hit the table and made a bunch of noise. Um, I do it all. I was saying to her, I'm like, look, Claire, we're, we're trying to figure out if we're going to do this documentary. I know you guys want to do it. I don't want my mother's documentary. If we're going to do this together, which we still need to work out, whatever this business plan is to be this, like tied into this drama. I'm like, you guys have to handle this drama before we go forward on this. So let's just not deal with this and we'll deal with it in January. So in January, um, is around the time that Claire and I talk next. During this time, as you can see from the, the everything that I've shared, Miriam and I start to have a dialogue and a conversation, and she's expressing problems that she's running into with Mike Rinder. I'm a little irritated because of all the stuff that had come up with. I'm not included in the conversation about this video that's like the production plan on this is not great. So when, when I get on the call with Claire, I say, hey, I'm... I have concerns about this. It doesn't look like the PR has been handled. You guys have just gone radio silent. What the hell? And I'm like, I, I don't want to work with Mike Rinder on these things. I want to know if you guys are going to have a plan. What is the plan? I, I was very clear that I wasn't happy with what was going on with Mike. I didn't get into details about it. I didn't get into the what I what I was feeling other than to try to... I, I, I am so... Again, I, I am impressed with Mike Brown on this. Knowing what he knows and what has happened, he still comes at this as a gentleman. He still comes at it with humility, with ethics. Even though he's getting none of that in return. To keep it professional and say, I don't want to work with Mike. I'm not, I'm not happy about the monetization plan on this thing. You owe me a business plan. And she still insisted that they would be producers on it, Mike included. And I say, well, give me a plan. And that's the last time that I have ever talked to Claire. Um, is, is anybody else as upset as I am about the fact of there has been this complete disconnection and shutdown of communication? As if, and, and I come at this not as a fellow creator. I don't think I'm anything important when it comes to that. But where I'm upset is, is as someone who has donated to the Aftermath Foundation, someone who has been a cheerleader for the Aftermath Foundation, look back through my, my prior videos where I'm literally making a plea to people who are leaving Scientology or thinking about leaving Scientology that they need to go to the Aftermath Foundation for help. And I've also been someone who's been out there to help raise money for the Aftermath Foundation. And Chad can attest to this because Chad, you did chatathons. You know, I've been part of those. We've done a number of those things to try to help raise money for the Aftermath Foundation. But to feel like I'm not important enough to be given an answer to what's going on that that betrayal absolutely is uh, disgusting fast forward the stuff with Miriam I send Claire that email strongly worded I agree um, but done so in an effort to hopefully uh, defuse defuse um, the problem that I saw coming I was trying to <laughs> I was trying to give him a heads up like hey there's some there's some bad stuff going on I wasn't trying to, uh, I wasn't trying to shit stir. I mean, I literally sent them that email. Like I didn't send it to anyone else. I didn't send it to Aaron Smith Levin. Like the guy that like literally has gone on to other things now. I haven't, I didn't send it to anyone else other than them. Hmm. 
Friday, um, 25 July, uh, about five days after I get the, um, hmm, I really didn't want to even go over this. Five days after I send that email and hadn't heard anything back, and I mentioned in my, um, I mentioned I mentioned in in the whole thing that I I hadn't gotten any answer the last video that I did, and that's true. That the answer in an email form, what I wasn't forthcoming about is that on the on on Friday at about ten thirty in the morning during business hours, I got a phone call from a number I didn't recognize uh, because it was blocked. It said caller ID blocked. And it wasn't like a telemarketer because telemarketers always are trying to figure out where your area code is and it's coming through on that. So I picked it up and I read, and when I answered it, I did not at first uh, recognize the voice. And um, and then I and then after I clarified who it was, it was Leah. And I'm not going to get into all of the details about this call because we went back and forth for a while uh, about this and. Um, I was very clearly trying to keep the subject on the complaints that I was trying to address with Miriam. And, um, I instantly started getting attacked. I was asked, and this is, there's some people in the chat that they're disappointed with me getting involved in the drama. Okay. The drama has like crawled up on my doorstep and is now calling me on the phone. I, I, I disagree. I don't think that it's crawled up on you. I think they literally took a dump truck and poured it on you. And I think I think you're being very gracious in, in the way that you're saying that. But I honestly believe that here it is. You've got a mountain of disrespect has been dumped on you. And the minute you start talking out about it, you're attacked. I was I was told I cannot believe you would question Mike Rinder after all the help that was given to your mother. Um, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're obviously not part of our team. You might be against Scientology, but I don't get why you're against us. And there were a bunch of ugly things that were said. Um, I don't respond well to people calling me out of the blue without like scheduling a call and trying to issue me like a, um, a bad boy um, you need to stand down, bend the knee sort of conversation. So I pushed back and we, what the things that were being said didn't make sense to me. And I asked her a question. I'm like, you're calling me about questioning Mike with respect to this. Have you read the email that I sent Claire? And the answer was no, she hadn't. She was responding to her friend. Um, and the, the heartache that I had caused to him by sending this email. And I, I made it very clear that I'm going to hang up the phone unless you let me read the email. And this went back and forth for a while, but not a whole lot was resolved as part of it. Let me be clear. I was very much trying to advocate for a shitstorm of a problem that I saw what, that Miriam was involved in. And I was trying to defuse that. And then to be told, like, you're not part of this team. I've been trying to straddle this fucking team for a bit and i didn't want to be on either side of either one i wanted us to all work together and i want to share my mother's story but when i have friends that are telling me that there is a problem that they're running into and i have a a line to talk to this organization i'm going to use that and if that makes me a shitty person and a shit stirrer then that's just the way it is but that's kind of what happened and i didn't i didn't appreciate it um and I had no intention of ever even talking about this because what I don't need this to be about is a celebrity that has a beef with me because she is trying to defend her friend because she doesn't have all of the information. Again, I'm going to. I've got, I've got to mirror that. Um, we all know Leah doesn't, she, she says what she thinks. I think she was honestly either misinformed or completely left uninformed on this and calling Mike Brown up and acting that way. I'm at a loss for words on this. I really am. I had so much respect for Leah. Yeah, yeah that's but, pretty shocking. I wow. I, I I how often do you find me left speechless, Chad? 
Never, Bo. Never. Yeah. I, I, I've dealt with, I thought I dealt with pretty much anything you could deal with in life. And <laughs> wow. Learning so much about people that never thought you knew before, huh? Yeah. To be very clear, I think Leah's work is pivotal. I think what she has done is extraordinary. I do not have a beef with Leah. And I think that all of this is, it could have been handled better if people were willing to handle it in a direct manner and not have this sort of crap occur. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what the conversation she had before calling me. I, and I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. And all I can be, all I can say is that it was not the it was not the response I was expecting. Um, I was either expecting no response or a phone call from somebody that I wrote the email to. Let me just put it that way. And still, honor, integrity. Put the truth out there, tell it, and then tell you. I don't have a beef with that person, even though what they did to me. I, Mike Brown, you're a hell of a man. You're a hell of a hey, man. Hey, Poe, I think uh I think Mike Brown is your your cousin or something like that. You know what I mean? You guys are pretty much alike. I don't know, but I mean, Lord, we got the same haircut. <laughs> I mean, but he's a hell of a guy, man. He's yeah. a hell of a guy. I got it, it's so much more respect for him now. Yeah. I don't know if I could handle all this and not be about to lose my mind that wow i mean and did you hear that i'm going to hang up on you unless you allow me to give you the facts wow even then advocating for honesty and openness we see who the true the true ethical honorable person in this is yeah wow there's no mistake in that my goodness so the rest kind of ended up you know at this point i was uh, you know one of the things that was said to me is we've already talked to mariam uh, we've handled mariam now we're calling you no one called mariam like mariam didn't like she didn't get off the phone with mariam and then call me that didn't really happen i don't Anyway, the, there was a there was a bunch of things that transpired. I'm very sure that I offended Leah, and she kind of offended me. And I'm I'm unhappy about how that dialogue went down, both what the things that I was saying and the things that she was saying. So I don't want. Here we go again. You see, like he was talking about with Laura FM. I did something insulting to you. Let's talk about it. I'm going to own up to what I'm going to do to what I did. And I'm going to try to make amends for it. And here he is yet again with in this situation. This is what someone who holds himself about, accountable does. This, this right here, I mean, if anything, uh, this is the kind of, kind of stuff that I would show young men who are going down the wrong path and are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And it could end up damaging their ability to be productive citizens or keep them from going to jail. This is the kind of video I would show them or the kind of story I would tell them. This is guy, this happened. Watch this. This is the kind of thing I would show to try to get someone on the right path, showing take accountability, take responsibility for what you're doing. Wow. Wow want to get into the details on that and i don't want people hating on leah i just want i want people to know that she's not necessarily unbiased about it because she's you know i think being put in a situation where she has to pick size and i doubt she likes it very much um i and i agree again with this and I, aaron and i had talked about this and i had talked about it with some other people that you know aaron was talking about it on his live and how she had called up the members of the aftermath foundation and went off on him over the fact they were trying to get rid of Aaron. And he made it very clear. He says, I have no doubt that if it came down to me or Mike, she would pick Mike. And I think very well, this is the situation, what he's talking about here, where he just, he feels that she was given either 
not all the information or cherry picked information or was just called up and said, Hey, look, Mike Brown, just he's, he's trying to take us down. And here he is still being the gentleman still saying, you know, I don't want people going after her. I, man, Mike, you, you got my respect, brother. All right. So, um, Hmm. I tried to take some notes uh, to keep myself in line here. So let me just try to frame for everybody the way that I'm trying to look at the providing um, support for Miriam to take out some constructs, which I think make this hard to understand in the way that it needs to be addressed. Miriam's case is very, very important. Yes. That is absolutely the way that I feel. So let's take the emotional charge things out of it that are Scientology and the Aftermath Foundation. Just <laughs> Again, Chad, you see it, how much, it, I mean, how many times have you heard me say, you got to step back, take the emotion out of it, look at it from an unbiased point before yeah. going head first into it. Absolutely, Paul, I agree. I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of similar similarities yeah. I'm seeing. Completely forget those things exist. Yeah. If you have a survivor outside of that, that is going to a person that probably has information that could be important for her to understand what was going on and to get information. And then at some point that interaction devolves into something that looks like it is perceived as unethical, that is not okay. So a person that is in the position yeah. to offer that help if they're going to self-incriminate somehow and to have all of these things go on, they probably need to step back from doing that because it's going to get messy. That's my opinion. Yep. I'm not saying Mike Rinder hasn't done good work. He's done a shit ton of good work. But at the same time, why does he feel he's self-incriminating himself? And in this weird situation, if she's just trying to clarify the situation that she was um, placed in. If the, she's then starting to receive what is clearly threatening emails and those emails, Miriam clearly covered on her thing with rabbit. That to me looks not good. That needs to be addressed. Again, all of the other bullshit out of it. If you just look at that, those things are not good. If the individual then doubles down and says, I have the information you want, but until you call me, I'm not going to give it to you. That's a problem for me. I have a problem with that. If an unbiased advocate writes to you, in your organization, and I didn't write to Mike Rinder, but I had a line to Claire. I, I've not wanted to work with Mike Rinder for some time. Writes to your organization and he gets intimidation or she gets intimidation back. There's something wrong with that. If you are met with ridicule and name calling when you're trying to then seek justice for yourself, there's something wrong with that too. And the only actual dialogue that ended up coming back in response to that, maybe I'm the flea or the dog or something. Like, apparently I'm way more important in this thing than I really thought that I was. Um, yeah. That's bullshit. And it's not okay. Another level um, into this. If a person's going to be putting them in, themselves into a position of power and celebrity, championing a charge on something in order to move that forward, but is unable to answer hard questions in, in a way that is... Um, out for the world to see and they can't stand up to that level of scrutiny which we know scientology can't that's why the, there's no you can never get a scientologist that's why they run inside of their buildings and all this stuff like mike rinder put up this whole blog he's been writing this shit obviously for a while i'm trying to respond to it after i get home from work because i'm not willing to go at night and not at least be able to share my thoughts about this and it's going to be unpopular and i guarantee some people are going to get mad at me about it but i really don't care the way that Mike has handled this entire thing with Miriam, I think is abhorrent and I think it's wrong. And I'm not talking about everything. I'm talking about this thing. The way that this was handled was not okay with me. And that is, you know, full stop period on that. If you want to see some stuff on Mike Rinder's channel, go and see, he has some videos that he's posted about the way Scientology responds um, to critics, uh, how Scientology responds to crimes. He has a bunch of stuff where he says, this is the way OSA deals with it. And it feels like that is going on. I'm not saying that Mike Rinder is, uh, again, I mirror that and I've said it numerous times. This literally feels like a page out of Scientology's book, out of the OSA book on how to deal things. This is ex this. I've said that so many times. 
I honestly felt like this was another OSA operation being run by Render. That's the feel that I get out of all this. Um, he's not my hero, okay? Um, I think he's done good work, but if this is what's going on and the and their victims are saying, I have a problem with that, and I'm talking about one specific thing, but if there's other things that go that come up from that, he should be dealing with that. I shouldn't be here talking about it or being like, Mike Brown has been conspiring with conspirators. Like, give me a freaking break, man. All right. I said a lot, and I have ranted for an hour and 10 minutes. I'll take a little, little breather, and then I'm going to get into some questions. All right. Uh, let me know in the chat. Is there more that he's going to come out with that I need to be seeing now, or is that the majority of it? so far um uh let me know so let me get into a couple of these all uh, right um tammy sees cat to be fair leah is the only reason aaron was not voted off the board for the, the first time that render tried she called every board member and called them crazy i am sure she used a lot more explanatives than that with Mike Brown, I think she didn't have all the information beforehand. I agree. Absolutely agree. I, I think that she, you know, she has made it very public that she, uh, how she feels about Mike Render. And I think that what happened with, with that is, is Mike called her up and he's venting to her or something along those lines. And she's like, oh, heck no. And that's where that happened. Um I don't know, but I, wow, I I, I want to believe in the best in people. I want to. I, I I'm heartbroken. Dawned on me. Oh, I like that name. Here's a question: How many watching this believe Render ever sat down with law enforcement? For me, no. Um, I believe he has, um, and I also believe that um, he has given information that you know i don't know if it's going to help or not turning over those documents over without having the translator to be able to break it down for everyone in law enforcement who've never been in scientology you know what good are those documents if you don't have that it's it's not it's like not having the rosetta stone and trying to to break a new language so okay. I see that there's like 38 questions start. I'm going to try to move through these or, or as fast as I can. Um, I, I'll try to address the, uh, the stuff that doesn't feel good and uh, the stuff that does as much as I can. Um, and we'll figure this thing out. So let me get into much this respect, thing. much respect. Let's see. Um, Drive-in fan, Leah had better get on the right side of history, but since uh, she hasn't said anything to date, her character is in question for me. Thank you for uh, the comment. I think I've addressed that. <clears throat> that, that, that stand up right there. That is absolute stand up. Put it out there. Open dialogue. Like I've said before, open dialogue is big. Open debate. You know, but it, he's like, I've I've addressed it. I've addressed it, and but I'm going to let you have your voice be heard. All right. Let's see. Aloha, fam. My understanding from criminal defense lawyer colleagues of mine is that Mike um, has a very real chance of facing charges if charges are brought against Scientology, and he was working um, if he was working there as an executive. That is a possibility, and I think that is kind of the concern. Um, and um, yeah. I, I, let me say this. I, I know a lot of people bandy or throw around the word RICO quite a bit. And uh, speaking with some attorneys, I think that there may be a real problem in that, whereas the Scientology being viewed as a religion may not, you may not be able to use it against them. I'm waiting to hear back uh, more affirmative which way or the other on it. And like I said, oftentimes in these situations, I step back, take a breath, don't take either side on it, present it cold. These are the facts. This is what we have. And, but I think that if you're sitting there and you're trying to say that you are trying to bring down this organization and you have this information that could show criminal conspiracy within an organization, 
shouldn't you be making sure that you're going with all that information, with the proof, bringing the victims to the FBI or the law enforcement agency that would handle it? Shouldn't that be what you're doing instead of sending out letters saying people are gaslighting? I don't disagree. And from uh, Anna McLaren, uh, love and respect. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Catherine, uh, Catherine Olson, more drama, really? Come on, let's fight the real enemy. Hint, it's not each other. Thank, thank you, Catherine. I very much appreciate your feedback. Um, I also know you, I think, are employed by the Aftermath Foundation, and um, I uh, very much appreciate uh, you doing that work. Uh, but at the same time, all I ask is that you listen to what I say and listen to what Miriam says with, um, you know, kind of a, uh, a forward approach and not try to go in with a biased opinion about it. I've heard people making this same statement before, and I've tried to live by that standard. But that's kind of saying that, like, they're allowed to attack you as much as they want to. But the minute that you say something in return, you're suddenly breaking up the community. Who's who's the real culprit in breaking this whole community up? You know, is you know, is it is it the people coming out and saying, "Hey, this is what's going on. We've been trying to have open communication, but we're shut out." Or is it the people who are shutting everybody out and trying to manipulate the the script on this. So, I mean, hint, it's not each other. And I, I'm actually very disappointed by that statement. Doesn't mean you're going to agree with me and that's completely fine. I'm okay if we agree to disagree. So thank you. All right. <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. How do you say that? Kendra Lynx, uh, Lennox, it went all over. He mentioned his being abused uh, repeatedly. Uh, the whole, he was uh, seeking sympathy above explanation. Yeah. The blog, I tried to scan it. Like it was very, very long. Uh, before this, I scanned as much as I could. A lot of it was kind of historical information and kind of going a lot into it. I'm not saying everything in there is a fabrication because I don't think it is, but I think that as I have pointed out, he has taken a lot of um, artistic liberties with uh, the way things were presented and crafted them in a certain way. And hopefully me uh, going over not only one little small paragraph, but the rest of the paragraphs um, at least um, was insightful, if nothing else. So thank you. All right, Jazzy Z. <clears throat> um, I feel so disgusted by MR responses, always attack, never defend. It's not what works in the real world. Nothing about the letter from the aftermath lawyer, which, um, which again, which again is the problem. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. The whole thing of the, the lack of transparency that kind of started when all the stuff between Aaron and the other board members started kicking off was really problematic for me. I'm like, why don't you just go on and say like th that could have been handled with the simple okay, we address this completely incorrectly. Um, some of the statements that were made to the people that are actually the um, the contributors to our foundation were inappropriate. We apologize for that. We're going to refund any of the monies uh, that came during those super chats and all this sort of thing. And we are going to reach out to Aaron Smith Levin and we're going to try to address this with him. And we very much apologize for the whole thing. If they would have just said that, it would have been fine. In my opinion, like just deal with it like uh, as head on as possible. And then the stuff... Uh, with me, do, do, do they honestly think that this is just going to blow over? I mean, you know, no matter how you feel about it, look at what happened, and I think that it's similar in this. Whereas you had the incident with Bud Light where they got boycotted, I don't drink, so it doesn't affect me either way, but. You know, you've had people coming out going, okay, it's time you need to, you need to go back, you know, it's time to end all this. And the response from everyone has been, no, they have not apologized for what they have said or how they have treated the people who made them as big as they were. And until they come out and apologize for what they've done, I'm not, I'm not supporting them. I think that's a very reflective kind of thing here 
And, you know, I normally, I stay out of politics. I don't want nothing to do with that stuff. But I think it's, you know, I, I know about that. And I have heard the things that are going on. And I think that's a very, very representative thing that's in between that and this. Miriam, I was uh, hoping it would get defused and it never did. Um, and if you can't, um, if you can't stand up to scrutiny, it makes me, it makes me wonder why not. That's, that's all I got to say. All right, Joe Spring. Uh, wow, that's a lot. Um, Rinder is so tone deaf. The fact that he is, uh, he's talking to abuse victims. Um, I, I see what you're saying and I don't disagree. I think going forward in any sort of works that the Aftermath Foundation does or any other uh, foundation or charity or anything, we need, like we are a bunch of traumatized individuals who are trying to deal with traumatized individuals that probably have not received the amount of counseling that we need. So when those were former executives that are then putting themselves in executive positions that are still traumatized and then are not trauma informed, that you're going to have problems. And that's part of the problem that I see is just everyone has this like almost what the Scientology would refer to as re-stimulation that's constantly occurring. It's it's not productive. Thank you. That is such a deeply reflective and honest statement. You hear what he says. We are all traumatized. We are all, basically everybody, every, everybody coming out has issues, has problems. And the you know there needs to be some kind of introspective whether it be counseling or support things like that but there needs to be something that needs to be honesty about the fact yeah we're damaged and we need help I, you know i say it all the time what's normal i'm not normal you'd think i was nuts you saw half the stuff i did when i was younger that have left my body busted up but i'm willing to admit it you know but are other people admitting their faults? All right. Grounded in grace. Yeah. That post had a lot of info. Um, he sadly, uh, sadly, he seemed to miss one of the main problems, the letter from the attorney and anyway, pick and choose with what he wants to talk about, I guess. But I, I, I kind of had a problem with that too. Yeah. All right. Kelly copter. Hi, Kelly. I love the Rosemary's words video. She is amazing. Thank you. I am trying to do my best at that. Obviously I don't think I'm going to be doing the um, documentary with the foundation anytime soon. So my approach is just for mom to sit down with uh, my iPhone and I bought myself a little uh, audio uh, setup so I can get better sound and we're just going to do our own videos and we'll share what we want. She has a lot of cool stories. So if you like tuning in for, uh, for mom stories, then hopefully I can get back to that um, soon. So thanks. And, and let me say it again. Um, I spoke with Kelly. I was very impressed with her. I think she's a good, genuine, honest person and has, I have a lot of respect for her. I really do. So I, and here you have her, you know, she's not only made it very public that she's, she wanted nothing to do with this because of, she didn't like the direction it was going and finding out that there was an attempt for monetization on this. And there had been no talk with Rosemary or with Mike about this. And that she stepped away because she didn't feel it was ethical. I, I think that speaks a lot about what kind of person Kelly Copter is. And she has my respect. Let's see. Um, Melissa's not sure about this. Miriam still hasn't gotten the support she deserves. Uh, we su The support we gave money to the Aftermath Foundation to provide in good faith. They are, uh, they are paying crisis counselors and attorneys instead. And again, I've heard, I've heard this from so many people. I gave on the premise that it was going to go to help someone like Miriam. I gave on the premise that there was going to be transparency. Uh, look, I understand there are, there are people who will get help that do not want to be, they don't want it to be made public. There's a lot of people coming out that are absolutely terrified that Scientology is going to come after them. I know that I've talked to people. So those people, you redact everything you don't bring that out but for those that are willing to talk about it, those who are willing to share then you know the the thing is is that again pay, crisis counselors you know or is it crisis crisis pr people and attorneys i understand organizations like this need to have attorneys it, the, this world is so litigious it's not even funny but how much did they pay to have that letter written? 
how much of donated money that was given to help survivors, how much of that money was paid to have that letter written and sent? Yeah, I, I think that that sounds, uh, that's not good, but we need to, we need to do better. Let's see, uh, Mandy, me private email to Claire should not have been shared with Mike Rinder. Absolutely. Um, well, I it should have been. I agree. I, I, I figured that public. she would, um, but I figured in doing so, like in sending it to her, I hoped that she would then address Mike and then say, "Hey, I got this from Mike Brown. Like this dude's writing to us now. We need to deal with this." That's what. That's the. That's what I. The effect I was hoping for. Um, the fact that it was shared with Leah. And she's not in their foundation. That's kind of problematic for me, especially when the only response I got was from her. So, oh, yeah, wow. I was anyway. I did. I did I not know that. that one up, I so didn't know that that you. had been shared with Leo as well. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Dora Fran. But let's also be honest. When Leah had, from Aaron's own words, Leah had the files that um, that had been that had been supplied to. Uh, Mark and Claire, and they've been putting them out, which apparently it's not being not been put out there that they received from Mike Render. When she released received those files, Aaron said that when he was talking to her about it, she said that she had spoken with Mike and he had told her he didn't want Aaron to have those files, but she gave them to him anyway. And you know, I think that I think that's pretty telling. Thanks, much respect to you, Mike. There seems to be a lot of unprofessional and acting like if you attack one, you're attacking all. Yeah, yeah. it's like the United Nation attack against one is an attack against all. I don't. Yep. There's going to be people that don't like to do content and stuff together. There's going to be people that don't like to work mm -hmm. together and all this sort of stuff. But when you're in an elevated position in a point of uh, self-imposed. Um, responsibility that you place there for yourself you have to hold yourself to a higher standard and those things uh were not good. so thank you you know I, and and that's completely honest uh there are people that don't want to work with me there are people i don't want to work with i mean if you knew how much i got to pay chad to make him come on here and just sit there and watch me do these videos i'm joking chad, chad. my pleasure my pleasure paul <laughs> but yeah I, and, and i'm just trying to break things up a little bit folks because it's you know um this has been deep and it has had a, a huge effect on me. Um, wow. Absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, we're coming up on three hours now. Um, I know my wife's going to kill me. And wow, I can't thank you all so much on Super Bowl night. Mm. There were almost 1,700 people at one point watching this live. Thank you so very, very much for putting your respect for 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 giving me your precious time. I I'm truly, truly troubled. Yeah, the, Judy, the, Jody, there there are still sixteen hundred and fifty five yeah. people. I, I am I I am so thankful that you are willing to sit here and listen to me, my big stupid self, and hear my opinions on this. I am so so thankful for you. Thank you so much. Um you know the thing is is this is yeah, yeah, Paula. Yeah, thanks to Mrs. Poe. I can hear her. She's down there with the kids right now. Um you know, it's great. They come over on Sundays. We do a bunch of cooking and stuff like that. We just have a good time. And, you know, I love my babies, even though they're adults now and they're out on their own. I still love my babies. Um, and I love mama. I love my wife. I thank you all so much. So very, very much. I am so sorry that if this triggered any one of you, it hurt any one of you. But I really believe that this needed to be put out there. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into. I had been there. I jumped in and said, "Howdy, you know, I like to get in and support the other content creators." But I didn't know how deep this went, and I purposefully did not watch it before now because I wanted to give an honest reaction to it. It's hurt me. It really has hurt me. There's, it's opened my eyes to so much, and. 
again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and sharing with me. Chad, do you have any any comments, bud? Oh, like I said earlier, I still have to absorb and process this because uh, I, I had no idea any any of this was, you know. What do you think about Mike? Mike Brown. Oh, Mike Brown. Yeah, I, I agree with your statements about he's a great guy. And, uh, you know, yeah. he's very fair. He's honest. He's trustworthy. And uh, I was subbed to his channel, but I'm going to start watching some more of his, his content, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. Like I said, we had a great conversation on the phone. I thought he was a really good guy. And, yeah, I saw a lot of similarities in there between us just talking to him on the phone. I see even more now that I've watched his his content. I mean, heck, even the haircut. But, um, folks, we I agree. We do need to keep our eye on the prize. But we also need to hold others accountable if they put themselves in a position where they are taking our money and it is supposed to be used in a specific purpose. We should be allowed to hold those people accountable. We should be allowed to say, hey, enough is enough. You need to answer our questions. It's that simple. Hopefully, the Aftermath Foundation will be able to survive. It will continue to be able to do great things for people who deserve it. That's my deepest wish. I don't, and, and I agree, I don't wish to attack Mike. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of comments for it. Uh, and I'm talking about Mike Render, not Mike, not Mike Brown. But I have a lot of questions and comments. It looked like there was a flashing light behind me. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it must have been the uh, fire trucks coming down the road. Uh, I live right down the road from the fire department, so the lights come through the windows. But... I think that there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. I think that both all the all the members on the board right now have a lot of questions they need to they need to get they need to answer. There needs to be a lot of accountability. And I think if you're gonna bring up these code of conduct and the rules of the aftermath foundation, then we need to start with transparency. We need to start with we need to be allowed to know what is going on. And I'm not talking about doxing people who do not wish to have their names put out there. I'm talking about this money went here, this money went there, this is what this was used for, this is what's going on with that. And if someone comes out and says, hey, I've been trying to get help and I've been refused, then whoever, whether it be the entire board or a singular person on that board, if they're the ones who are stopping that person from getting help, they need to answer to those of us who are supporting them. I honestly feel that way. I know that we can move past this. I know that we can come back stronger. And I, I agree. We need to keep our eye on the prize of ending this madness. But I also think that this is just a blip in the radar. And that movement is coming forward as we do it. Again, I thank you all so very much for your time. I so deeply appreciate each and every one of you. We may not agree on things, but we can have an open discussion about things. And as always, folks, life is short. We get one shot.